Hello everybody. Hi. Hope you can hear us. My name is Erik. And my name is Ruud. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about Zentry. Uh, just launched. Uh, I think one of the most anticipated products this year. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I mean, uh, already um, AMD is already talking about it for many years, uh, teasing it, uh, always a lot of rumors about it, and finally today, uh, the day is there that you can buy it in the stores. Um, my name is Erik. My name is Still Ruud. Still Ruud, we already did that? <laughs> yeah, we did that. Yeah, oh, we're fast. Well, anyway, you know, uh, we are actually back up for this live stream because Michiel was going to do this live stream. He was a little bit sick. Um, then uh, he asked us to take over. We invited AMD. Um, he had also some other reason not to join. A very good reason. Um, <laughs> so anyway, doesn't matter. We have all the content. We have a lot of overclocking results. Uh, we have two unique uh, main boards, uh, or B550 Unify and B550 Unify X. So yeah, let's, let's, let's start. start, I would say. Yeah. Well, maybe first talk about the giveaway. Um, our chatbot on Twitch and on uh, YouTube is spamming each five minutes a link. You can click on that. You can also go to msi.com slash two slash insider uh, of Google MSI Insider's uh, landing page. I'm not sure if the URL is working today. Um, let me check. Uh, they're saying Ruud is a little bit more silent. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. audio. Yeah. Always like the that. talking one. I'm more screaming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, and today you can win an Assassin's Creed Valhalla code. Uh, it's a new game. We'll launch, I think, next week, Tuesday. And next week, Wednesday, we're also going to do a live stream about that because we have a bundle uh, with a lot of products from us. Let me check. Uh, some main boards, uh, selected main boards, monitors, uh, cases, uh, Power supplies, water cooling, and a gaming chair. We also have this new gaming chair next week here. Uh, it's an it's a Assassin's Creed Valhalla branded one. And personally, I'm looking forward to this game because I, well, I didn't like Assassin's Creed in the past, but the recent three or four years, um, I'm playing the game. And, and uh, you maybe remember Peter and me dressing up uh, in Odyssey uh, <laughs> yeah. one and a half year ago, I believe. Uh, that was fun time. Um, but that's for next week. So let's start with, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, of course, drop them in the chat. <laughs> Eric in the stream today, Repo Man, something's going to be broken. No, because, you know, we're doing social distancing. Uh, Ruud is about four, five meters away from me, Ruud. Yeah, about five, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any products here. No. Yeah. I've got the products. Yeah, I have a lot of, actually, I have three computers here. One for the chat, one for the presentation, one for the... Information one for the uh, how do you say that the, the 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 OBS for the stream. What can go wrong? A few <laughs> weeks a few weeks ago, Michiel clicked uh, by accident on end stream. It's a big red button. I'm not going to do that. Uh, um, so. Yeah, let's let's talk uh, talk about uh, Zentry. So uh, if you uh, followed AMD a little bit, uh, their the core names are called Zen and uh, uh, the first Zen when it was introduced, you had also Zen Plus. Um, Zen Plus was just on the same um, manufacturing process, right, Ruud? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, uh, improvements. Uh, then, of course, Zen 2, uh, big step forward. And uh, now with Zen 3, uh, yeah, they make a huge step forward again. Uh, it's a 7 nanometer design. Uh, it's optimized design. Uh, but you don't, yeah, I mean, that's only helping a bit. It's mainly the architecture uh, which they fixed. And... Um, yeah, they also announced they're working on Zen 4s, of, co of course, and yeah, I guess they're also working on Zen 5 or 6, you know. But this is still many years away. It's a matter of planning ahead. Um, but most important, I mean, that's all uh, uh, for the future, Zen 3. Uh, so for Zen 3, I think you all already know, they launched uh, at this moment, because normally later they can launch some more CPUs. Uh, they launched uh, four different CPUs. One Ryzen 5, one Ryzen 7, and two Ryzen 9s. Um, yeah, interesting price points. Uh, normally uh, the, the price is a little bit more aggressive, but I think now they know that they're fast in the market uh, compared to Intel and, and all the media, your favorite uh, local media websites, also published reviews. Um, you can go there, check them out, and you'll find that the performance, yeah, they're beating Intel. We, will, we are also going to later to show you that. Ruud is going to do live benchmarks. Ruud, you have some games, right? 
Yeah, I have one game. I have uh, some uh, yeah, CPU benchmarks, and uh, we compare to the 3950X, so the, the previous uh, uh, flagship of AMD. Yeah, we also have uh, three Western Digital uh, black uh, SN850 one terabyte drive, so we're also going to uh, yeah, uh, do some RAID setup. Yo, you have it there, Ruud? Yeah, uh, I have the box I can here. show you in detail, yeah. Cam. Yeah. Okay. And we have our Unify model. Maybe you also can you show Unify already? Unify, yeah. I can take it off. Uh, I'm not sure if the... Yeah, that's okay, that's okay. This is so the this is the new B550 main board, and it has a very strong uh, VRM, and it has yeah. four M.2 slots, of which three are uh, Gen 4. Which is quite unique to have for uh, yeah. M.2 on a B550. Yeah, and uh, we'll explain more about that later. Okay, so then we go back to uh, the information from AMD. Um, which one do you think will be most uh, interesting? I already see some people, uh, the 8 core part is interesting, but just a little bit too expensive. If you look at these CPUs, um, the 5600X will uh, come, I think it's the. Yeah, like this. It uh, will come with a cooler in the box, uh, but the 5800X, 5900X and 5950X uh, don't have a CPU cooler, so you will need to purchase a separate cooler and we would advise to uh, get some water cooling. Uh, because you really notice that these architectures scale very well uh, when they cool better. Maybe you can add something about well, the yeah, PBO and those kind go, of things. Yeah, if you want to do overclocking, we've seen uh, the, the power will shoot uh, up very quickly. So, uh, yeah, just add a lot of power and add a lot of cooling. <laughs> yeah, and in the past it was uh, um, different. If you were looking at CPUs, they were bottlenecked uh, uh, by, for example, um, uh, clock speeds, etc. But now it's mainly about thermals. And then the boost speeds, they can, uh, yeah, they can go higher depending on how much you cool it. And then water, cool it, water cooling is uh, helping really well. Um, yeah, let me check the chat. 4 to 500 uh, motherboard recommendations. Uh, yeah, there are many. Uh, well, if you look at motherboards, you can uh, choose for two chipsets, V550 and... Um, X570, you also can look at some older models, but then you don't have a Gen 4. So then we're talking about the, uh, the 400 series, uh, which is B550 and X470. Later we're also going to talk about that, but because these new Zen 3 CPUs work perfectly on uh, the older main boards, there will be a BIOS update for that. However, uh, you don't get all the benefits. Uh, I think RUD, PBO, etc. don't scale that high, yeah, or there is something. Probably also the, the earlier motherboards are not really equipped to yeah. handle the, the overclocking power of these CPUs. So Indeed. Yeah, if, if you go for B450, then uh, it's fine to go with the 5600X, but uh, don't expect the 5950X with overclocking uh, to run uh, perfectly fine on the, those kind of motherboards. Yeah, that's just uh, uh, run, you can game on it, you yeah. can uh, run with everything. Stock but if speeds, you it shouldn't be a problem because they all stay uh, roughly around the 105 watt uh, TDP, so yeah. no issue there. Indeed. So uh, let's have a, um, yeah, and above that is 95 watt. Uh, let's have a little look at the architectural changes AMD did. So um, Zen 2 on the left, Zen 3 on the right, and Zen 3 on the right is the new 5000 uh, CPUs, or Vermeer, what their code name is. And, and you will hear us talking more about Vermeer, uh, because we're still into those code names. Um, but I think in half year time, nobody will remember what Vermeer is. You remember all the code names from the past? Mm -hmm. Most of them. What, what is the, then the thousand series? Uh, Pinnacle Ridge. Yeah, damn, you know. <laughs> um, Intel 850 chipset. <laughs> 850, that's an oldie. The Tehama or something? Uh, that could be, uh, yeah. No, that's the only one I remember. Those names are too long ago. And Springdale yeah. and all those uh, yeah, 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 funny yeah. names. Yeah. Anyway, um, biggest change in the layout is that they uh, combined the cache. And, uh, they, they, yeah, well, one of the problems, not really problems, one of the, the bottlenecks, I, I should say, on the Zen 2 um, architecture, or maybe it's not really architecture, but layout, was that they have some, um, how do you call it, Ruud? Uh, Inter-CCD latency. Yeah, yeah, so, so between, the different cores were yeah. communicating with each other with the cache, and if yeah. you then want to go from the 
top cache to the bottom cache via de cores. It, it, yeah, that was just adding a uh, delay. Yeah. And now they're all connected to the same uh, cores. So they all, all have access to that and uh, the latency is uh, uh, much uh, lower. So more efficient in the end. Um, so here you see two CPUs. Uh, our overclocker top, you see, he took them apart. I still uh, uh, remember, uh, this, this is like a long time ago. Um, what was the, the CPU from Intel uh, with the, the special overclocking edition? You still remember? With the yellow logo? I think it was just called the Extreme, right? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I, well, anyway, I was in Taiwan. And, and uh, there was an overclocking contest organized by Intel. And uh, then uh, Topici, he was the, for the first time deleting a CPU. He cut his finger open, bleeding all the over the floor. <laughs> but anyway, he, uh, uh, he won uh, in the end. So that was uh, pretty fun. Well, well, maybe not fun, but... <laughs> <laughs> bleeding fun. Yeah, yeah. That, that's right. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, on the left side you see uh, uh, Matisse, uh, and on the right side you see Vermeer. And, and yeah, as you, if you look, the right uh, CPU dies, so on top you see two CPU dies, and on the bottom you see the I.O. chip. The I.O. chip, nothing changed. If I'm correct, it's still 12 nanometer or 14. This one 14, right? I have no idea. Yeah, anyway. Uh, Doesn't really matter. It's, it's the same what's, what's on the, uh, the PCH or the chipset. Um, and um, yeah, and the top left, Matisse, for example, this one is for example an 8 core. And if they want to make a 16 core of it, what they would do, they would add a second chip. And so on the right you see a 16 core or a 12 core for that matter. Yeah. Let me check the chat. A lot of chatter going on. <laughs> There were more, more Amazon Gaming trios, yeah. Everybody waiting for the yeah. NVIDIA cards. And for the AMD cards, yeah. for that matter. Um, one of the biggest achievements besides the cache is the IPC uplift. And IPC is instructions per clock. So basically, how much can a CPU do in the same time? And the more it can do, the faster it finishes tasks. In other words, uh, more FPS. Uh, so if you look at the, uh, the Zen 3 core compared to the Zen 2, on average, we're talking about 19%. And of course, this data is from AMD. So, well, I always say don't trust what, uh, what uh, uh, somebody else or somebody say, telling about themselves. Also, you should not believe our story. Um, you know, always look for independent sources to uh, verify and backup. Um, so, uh, and, and here you see, based on the application, and it, it ranges from 9% up to 39%. And 39% uh, uh, of course are the games in 1080p, because 1080p is where you have the biggest benefit. That's where the CPU scales most, uh, the CPU bottleneck. And that's also why a, a game like um, CSGO, you can run at like 300, 400 uh, frames without any problem, uh, if your CPU is fast enough. Yep. Um, so, I think this is pretty impressive. Uh, because this makes run everything faster. And um, why this is important? Because they have the, the AMD was always very strong at multi-core performance, uh, multi-threaded performance. I think that's also why they showed uh, a Cinebench. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just a benchmark, but, but Cinebench scales really well. So if you have the cores and if you have the, the speed, the multi-threaded speed, it shows off uh, very good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, AMD was a big fan of it, uh, and single core uh, perf uh, performance, uh, single threaded performance, uh, AMD was always lagging behind uh, compared to Intel, and that is also this time where they make made huge steps. And later, Ruud, you can benchmark that. Uh, you, we're going to uh, benchmark. Yeah, compared to the old AMD, uh, older yeah. Uh, Matisse, yeah. The yeah. 39, so we, we are going to benchmark. Let me see. X570. Uh, Unify versus B550 yeah. Unify, and uh, the one is with a, what is it, 16 core yeah. uh, Matisse. X, X, yeah. And the other one is with a 16 core uh, Sentry. Yeah, Vermeer, yeah. The 5950X. Yeah, uh, besides that, AMD also in improved their power efficiency. And again, I mean, this is a slide of AMD. Uh, go to your favorite website, uh, your favorite YouTube channel. Uh, there are now reviews online, and, and uh, yeah, they will have their own take on this. But we also see this in our own benchmarks. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we we saw that power consumption in uh, multi-threaded loads like uh, Cinebench or uh, Blender or 
anything that, that's loading all the cores simultaneously, uh, the power was exactly the same. So no difference there, and the performance is better, so uh, you get more uh, performance per watt. Um, Arthur uh, is asking on YouTube, is asking for Tomahawk Arctic, please. Yeah, the um, white one, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice motherboard, but the, the, the problem with those kind of mainboards, with either a silver or a white PCB, is that um, uh, nowadays everything is high frequency. So uh, you have the PCI uh, Gen 3, Gen oh, sorry, Gen 4 signal. Yeah. Uh, you have higher clock speeds on the memory. You have more cores. So the signal in the PCB and a number of layers are very important uh, because each time you have uh, interference over there, uh, you will lose out on performance. And we noticed that um, on those uh, silver or white PCBs, the signal, it's always very difficult to get perfect. So on a, in a black PCB, you basically get more performance. It's, it's a strange technical uh, um, story, uh, but yeah, that's how it works. And that's why, you know, nowadays you will not see a lot of those white or, or black, oh, sorry, white or silver colored PCB. Yeah, I love the silver ones. But, motherboards yeah. which perform well. I mean, you can still make them, but then it's just, you know, not for overclocking and not for, for, for the best performance. Yeah, I also like them. Yeah, look very nice. Uh, somebody is saying uh, uh, B550 Mortal Max, please update all to PCI Express 4. Uh, those, kinds are always, those kind of things are always very difficult because you uh, have limitations of the CPU, the chipset and the architecture. And this also is based on the price level because PCI Express Gen 4, and we already explained this uh, I think some years ago in our live stream, is very expensive. Uh, you have the PCB. Uh, the PCB needs to have enough layers and, and that costs a lot of money. Uh, it needs to be a special woven PCB. I don't know how that stuff works. Uh, basically, high quality PCB, what they used to use in the server business. This is now used in the uh, normal uh, desktop motherboards, uh, models. Just for better signal signaling. Um, then, uh, of course, you need uh, components who can handle PCI Express 4. So if you have a switch something, you also need to have a PCI Express Gen 4 switches. Uh, and they are more expensive. So all those things add up to the cost. Um, and if you look, uh, I'm not sure, yo, you were talking about B550 uh, Martha Max. Uh, that price level, it's, it's very difficult to put on all the slots PCI Express Gen 4. And if, you, yeah, if we talk about a PCI Express Gen 4 uh, performance, I would say if you look at VGA, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, we no. saw with the... Uh, 3080, 39 launch from NVIDIA that it's about 1%. I mean, there are different benchmarks, but would you agree? Yeah, I also tested it on this one because you can switch oh. the, the lanes a little bit and uh, even at, at uh, times four, so four lanes only at Gen 4. Uh, I didn't notice any uh, performance degradation in uh, Time Spy or Time Spy uh, Extreme or uh, Metro Exodus. So uh, there was nothing to show there is any, uh, any performance uh, so decrease. Uh, only four lanes, that's yeah. the same like Gen 2, right? Uh, that, yeah, that's the Gen 2 by 16 uh, yeah. speed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, but for SSDs, uh, NVMe SSDs, Gen 4, very fast. Uh, we'll you will see you. that later we'll as well. You. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, efficiency, check out all the reviews. And uh, yeah, this is, I think, uh, one of the most important improvements which AMD made, but that's all due to what we talked about, the, the cache, uh, the IPC uplift, single threaded performance. And if you look at the last uh, Ryzen 9 3900 XT, uh, 546, and now uh, with a, I think that's a 6 core, uh, 5600X, uh, Ryzen 5, you already have a jump of 10%. Is that correct? Yeah, that's 10%. Yep. Um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, each uh, CPU is, is uh, faster and single threaded performance, which is actually quite strange. So that uh, it means they have a higher clock speed. Yeah, the boosting uh, mechanism because it's single just core. works better. Yeah, oh, Simple. the boosting is better. Yeah. yeah, that's also correct. So yeah. more power to one core, and therefore you can boost it higher. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, so clocks go higher. Yeah. Uh, somebody is asking about smart uh, access memory. Uh, that's a feature AMD indeed introduced uh, with the new, uh, yeah, let's say Big Navi. Um, I didn't test it yet, 
So we are still waiting for our own uh, sample. Uh, and, and to be honest, I was so busy this week, I didn't check with our HQ uh, what they had. But yeah, smart access memory basically means a faster way of communicating uh, through the caches. Uh, and that should uh, perform, uh, I think, I don't remember, up to like 11%, is that correct? Could be, I don't, I, I don't know. I think that was up to 11%. And I uh, first want to uh, test it. Sorry? I first want to test it. Yeah, yeah. You, just you are announced, you know. I mean, true, true, true. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's VGA. Um, okay. So these are results from uh, TechSpot. Uh, just published about one hour ago, one half hour ago. Yeah, so maybe Ruth, you can tell something about this. This is 11 uh, games. Yeah, usually the the, uh, the flagship, the previous flagship of Matisse, the 3950X, was uh, 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 was dominated by the uh, 10900K from Intel in uh, uh, gaming, especially in the uh, lower um, resolutions uh, and lower settings. So basically, there's more CPU bottleneck. Uh, so they've tested 11 games, and now the 5950X is beating the uh, 10900K from Intel with one frame per second. So closing the gap and just beating them by one frame per second. So that's a great achievement from AMD. Now I'm checking jet. So I'm going to say 90% performance, right? Well, uh, check, check the real benchmark by independent media. Yeah, it, it also depends a lot on the game. Some games don't really scale with, with, with the CPU and only rely on the GPU. Yeah, and uh, some uh, some games, especially the ones who output higher frame rates, so 200 uh, uh, FPS range or more, then uh, the CPU will become also a bottleneck, and then uh, yeah, the higher the, the the single core boost is, the better the, uh, the the FPS will be. So and some games just are better multi-threaded as well. So yeah, AMD absolutely. already had an advantage there uh, because they had 16 cores instead of. Uh, just the eight. Oh, also the depends yeah. on the, the engine most times, if the engine yep. is optimized for it. Yeah. And well, what type of game? I mean, some games are not that demanding. Yeah, well, mostly are shooters and, and stuff like that. We like or the shooters. Yeah, yeah there um, are many of them. Yeah. So this is from Tom's Hardware. Uh, again, one and a half hour ago uh, published. Uh, eight games, average, uh, again, uh, 1080p, yeah. uh, because that's where the, you see the power of the CPU. And yeah, in yeah. this benchmark, um, on average, not everything is faster than Intel. Oh, that's overclocked Intel. So yeah, that's the top part is the overclocked one. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah. So the, the black one is the default clock speeds, and the other ones are uh, overclocked. So the Intel ones are yeah. overclocked to 4.8 and 5.1, yeah. <coughs> and the uh, AMD ones use PBO. And we're not sure if PBO does much for single threaded, so. Really well, a little so. bit. Yeah, a little bit. Should yeah. be a few frames if yeah. you look at this. Or they gain an advantage in the multi-threaded games. That's yeah. also possible. So some uh, internal uh, performance data uh, from our uh, overclocking lab, uh, from our uh, yeah testing guys, uh, MTC team. So they tested uh, different uh, CPUs uh, with auto, over of, yeah, auto overclocking and uh, uh, PBO. Um, Ruud, maybe you can explain this. Uh, precision boost overdrive, that's basically the, the auto overclocking or um, giving more power to the boost. So precision boost, the name already says it. Uh, if you uh, give it more power, it will boost higher and longer. Um, very similar to the power limits on the Intel. Uh, if you uh, if you just uh, unlimit it, uh, so uh, you unlock the, the the power, then you will get more performance. Uh, but it also consumes a lot more power. So yeah, you trade performance uh, for power or power for performance. Yeah, um, uh, interesting question. Uh, fanless X570 motherboard? No, we don't have that in the plan. I know there are two vendors who have one board on the market. Um, and yeah, I mean, X570, it's, uh, why would you at this moment go for X570 compared to B550? Basically, um, I don't know, Ruud? Oh, sorry. 
Uh, why do you, would you go for X570? Uh, yeah, you have some more ports. Uh, you have more PCI Express Gen 4 lanes. Uh, uh, also true. Natively from the M.2. For yeah. the M.2, if you have more than one. Crossfire yeah. can go on both. Yeah. No, I, I think Crossfire is... It's yeah. also that. It's, yeah, it's similar like yeah. SLI, multi, multi yeah. GPU. Uh, I think that uh, especially if you have multiple M.2s, which you, you, you like to have Gen 4 because Gen 3 is still fast enough for many things. So yeah. Uh, but I if you want to have the fastest, then yeah, go for X570. For all other purposes, I think B550 is, uh, uh, is just as good. And it's more cost affordable. Yeah, yeah. It, it will be, yeah. Especially yeah. if you go for a gaming rig, then uh, you don't need a 16 core and you don't need like uh, um, multiple Gen 4 lanes uh, uh, either. Indeed. This is also uh, something interesting from our overclocking uh, team. Uh, they can do a base clock of uh, 112. And uh, if you look at the, I believe I saw some screenshots also on Matisse of 113. So they can go a little bit higher. Uh, can maybe also depend on the quality of the CPU core. Uh, but I, I thought this was quite interesting. Because in the past, Ruud, uh, I think you still remember, it was like 100, 103, and then everything bottlenecked. Yeah, yeah. Everything crashed. Yeah, 105, and then it was gone, yeah. But so yeah, I, I don't know if you really get much out of it, but if you're into overclocking, then this might help you just getting the, the edge, you know, getting you, you just a little bit further than uh, before. Yeah, indeed. And this was done on a B550 Unify. Um, uh, yeah, our, our in-house overclocking top PC, he already spent a lot of time with the CPU. Um, and uh, he also has some world records later I will show you. Uh, these are the recommended settings uh, for OC voltages. And of course, this depends on the CPU. So, I mean, don't take this for granted. Uh, do your own research, do your own testing. Yeah. Start with small steps. Uh, this is what he found on average on his uh, CPUs. And I don't know how many he had or ha has, I should say. Uh, the best voltages for benchmarking and, and stress testing. And of course, stress testing is different than benchmarking. Yeah. Uh, so the voltages can go a little bit lower. Um, yes. Meaning, uh, benchmarking uh, needs... No, benchmark needs more voltage. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying that correctly. And below the power consumption, the overclock mode. So, and this was something uh, what I was... Well, not surprised, but uh, normally, do you still remember the normal TDP route for the 5950X? Yeah, it's, uh, it should be 105. So it should be 105 watts, indeed. Yeah. And here yeah. you see 294, let's say 295. So that's a big step. Yeah, uh, I think in my testing, when, when I'm doing uh, Cinebench and uh, Blender and that kind of stuff, uh, I got it. Yeah, the, the, the software doesn't really support the power consumption uh, sensor yet. Uh, at least the HW Info program doesn't do that yet. Uh, but I've also measured with a, a current clamp. So basically, you're just uh, uh, taking the, the 12 volt wires that go into the uh, CPU power connector. And if you measure there, then uh, it's about 128 watts going in. So that's before the VRM. So before the, the power circuit on the motherboard. And you, you deduct about 10% for the, the efficiency of the VRM. And then that, that's about the power the CPU will get. So that's a roughly around 110 watts. Uh, and so it's pretty close to TDP. It's, uh, it's much closer than I Intel uh, is uh, projecting. Yeah. Um, a few interesting uh, questions from the chat. Uh, let me see. Um, yeah, which one is better, X570 Tomahawk or B550, B550 Unify? Well, Unify is it's, uh, it's a much stronger VRM. Yeah. Um, much well, the X570 Tomahawk is also pretty good. Uh, That's true, but this one has 14, 90? Yeah, 14 uh, pieces, 90 amp. Yeah, and ISL do you know the, power, smart power the Tomahawk stages. one? I'm not sure how many it has. I think it has 12. Yeah. That's so I think this VRM of this one is better and memory yeah. overclocker on this one is better. Yeah. Um, but no need to change if you have it. And no, then, no, no. And that is only for, is, yeah. uh, for overclocking. Yeah, especially for overclocking. Yeah, yeah. indeed. Uh, the VRM part on the X570 uh, Tomahawk was already very, very good. This is a, yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, yeah. Actually, it's too good for that price level. Yeah, yeah. I don't uh, know the price level of this one, but. Uh, this is about uh, around 300. 
And okay, later I will give you the, the pricing. The Tomahawk, yeah. uh, when is it available? Um, these bots are shipping right now. So I think t in the end of this month, so in three weeks time, you should get, be able to get them in most countries, if not one week later. Mm, will there be an update? Uh, will MSI uh, soon, or when will MSI gonna release an update for the B550 Tomahawk Max? Uh, this will be probably in February next year because uh, we are depending on AMD for the, well, we will going to talk later about that, but we will, we are depending on AMD for the BIOS code and they will release this in January 2021. So we need some time. So yeah, it's safe to say uh, February. Um, but we will get there. Um, oh, uh, we're here. <laughs> yeah, good yeah. timing. So let, let's, talk, <laughs> let's talk about bias support. Um, so we already uh, released the uh, beta bias for the uh, 5000 series or, or for Mir or uh, Zentry, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think it was in September, I think, already. Um, anyway. Yeah. Uh, that was a battle BIOS uh, for both our uh, X570 and B550 boards, uh, for all of them. Um, all can run the 5000 series, but of course, you are not going to put the most high-end on the most cheapest uh, model. That's not logical. Of course, it will work, but don't expect uh, miracles. Uh, might even trouble. Um, we, I think we uploaded the final BIOS versions yesterday. So from this moment, you can find the final BIOS. You can update it uh, from our website, download it, or you can use um, uh, live update uh, or software, uh, which will probably notify you, hey, there's a new uh, BIOS available. And then you have the final BIOS with support for um, Sentry with the, for the 5000 series. If you look at the bottom part, uh, AMD is working on the uh, 400 series, and this will be only for B450 and for X470. And then when we get this BIOS code, we, you know, we still need to optimize it. Uh, each vendor, it's not only MSI, each vendor needs to optimize it. Then we will release some beta BIOS. And I'm not sure when there will be a final BIOS. Uh, this always takes time. Um, uh, you say final BIOS, but it's like official release BIOS. I mean, the final BIOS is <laughs> when there's no final, no bias coming anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's completely that's correct. No, yeah, it's not going to be yeah. the final one. Uh, yeah, well, when it's MP bias. Yeah, yeah. But the, that's maybe the more confusing. Bias, yes. MP, uh, it's called mass production. And when we produce a board, we only do MP bias on there, so not uh, beta bias. So uh, yeah. sometimes. Maybe that's an interesting live stream to talk about how many BIOS versions we sometimes get and the numbering <laughs> and... Yeah. Already tested two of the uh, two betas on this one. Yeah, so. this is a, what we have here is an engineering <laughs> board. Yeah. Maybe Richard can show the people. Um, yeah, it, it's an engineering motherboard, but it looks quite final. Yeah. Uh, but the BIOS still needs some work and uh, yeah. We, we BIOS is all... Yeah. Yeah, it's software, so they, they can tweak and, and do whatever they want uh, with it. Yeah, so. but this is uh, not a final board, so we're working with engineering boards. It's a different BIOS than the, the MP BIOS shipping on the boards. Yeah, this um, is not even 100, so it's even, yeah, yeah, maybe alpha or whatever you call it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, let's say February. Um, sorry. Let's catch up with some questions. <laughs> see an old Somebody uh, knows you from a yeah, yeah, long Alex, time ago. Yeah. Hi, Alex. <laughs> long time no see. Well, and that will take some time with the uh, COVID-19. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, Moose is asking, when can we buy these boards at the end of the month? Uh, we're a bit early to show you these boards. Uh, but yeah, Zen3 was launching today. So we figured best way to uh, link it to these boards. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice board to show and also yeah, we're using beta BIOS. Yeah. Ryzen six will work on AM four. Yeah, no problem. Well, this is also AMD announced already. This actually in the beginning they said, I think they, I still remember they had a slide with saying that Sentry would only work on uh, X uh, five seventy and. Uh, uh, yeah. B550, but then everybody was, no, panic, and I want to use it on my old mainboard, you promised, and then they, I don't want to say they backpedaled, because 
I think they already fulfilled their promise. Anyway, this is the last generation, so Zentry, which will work on B450 and uh, sorry, yeah, B450 yeah. and X470. Mm -hmm. Yes. Unless you complain. <laughs> <laughs> power to the people. <laughs> yeah, power to the people. No, I mean, uh, you know, uh, DDR5 is coming up. I, I don't know when, you know, probably maybe this year, maybe next year. Uh, PC Express Gen 5 is coming up. Um, all those kind of new technology, USB 4. Uh, so you you can you cannot keep trying to uh, have have your newest fastest component working on your oldest uh, uh, chipset that's uh, impossible i think they're already uh, pretty yeah. impressive what they did so far exactly yeah um yeah maybe uh, quickly some because i also see some people talking about tomahawk and and uh, bazooka uh so this new CPU, uh, this is a six core, uh, 5600X. We put this on our uh, bazooka, B550 Bazooka mainboard, which is not really a high-end mainboard. Uh, Entry-level mid-range, I would say. And the uh, MOSFET temperature has 69 degrees, so it can cool it very well. No problem there. Uh, same what we did with the 5900 on the Tomahawk, B550 Tomahawk. Oh, it's also 69? Yeah, same. Same uh, uh, MOSFET temperatures. Yeah, but this so, is a 12 core. And this is a 12 core indeed, yeah. And then the 5950X, uh, which is a uh, 16 core uh, on Unify, 67 degrees. So a bit lower. Uh, later we're going to talk about cooling and, and all the stuff. Are you going to, to take it apart? Mm, didn't plan it. <laughs> better, better not. <laughs> it depends on the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, Taking it apart is not a problem. Putting it back together. Yeah, putting for me it back always. and then hopefully the cooling will still yeah. be you as know, good as before. I think a lot of people no, always... Oh, sorry? No, if you take it apart, uh, this one has cooling pads, so it shouldn't have any problem. Yeah. I think a lot of people, I already saw somebody in the chat saying yeah. that I always uh, take uh, stuff apart. And you know what I do when I need to put it back together? I bring it to Ruud. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? I don't know if you can show on the detail cam. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, sure. Uh, this one uh, also has uh, the VRM back plate, so uh, the back of the uh, metal will also cool the VRMs because the hottest part of the, the MOSFET or the, the smart power stages is usually on the PCB side, so uh, this will help uh, cooling as well. And uh, we didn't do that on the previous generation, but uh, this is a very good, uh, good uh, <coughs> improvement. Sorry. Uh, question in the chat, can I up, uh, update the BIOS without CPU? Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. most boards uh, since B450 have a um, uh, BIOS flash button and uh, you just uh, put the uh, BIOS file from can the website. Can you show in the cam? Sorry? Uh, yeah, there's always then one USB port that is labeled. Not sure if you can read it. No, no. I put really. autofocus off. Yeah, so it, it's the one with the gray. Uh, rectangle around detailed it. Detailed cam, I can fix that. Can you? Uh, you can try, cam yeah. background, detailed cam. I should not fix it. Everybody will say, no, don't touch it, don't, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Uh, configure video. But uh, uh, one USB port that, that's linked to a special chip that can flash the bias. So now it should do autofocus. So you do, uh, uh, so you download the bias from the website, the latest one and then rename it to msi.rom, so ROM, and uh, place it in the, in the root of your USB stick. Put the USB stick in this USB port. Then you only need the, the, the CPU power and the ATX 24-pin uh, power connected, and then press this button. Let me see, this one. Yeah. It says bias flash button. And then the LED will start blinking, and once it stops blinking, it means it's done, and it has flashed your bias to the latest one. Yeah, and especially on AMD, that's yep. uh, yeah because they have quite longevity for the platform. Is that correct English? Quite longevity? Yeah. No. Quite a long longevity? No. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, they, they Most support people already know it's we, we are Dutch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Otherwise, I mean, if they hate it, don't come back, no problem. Um, 
Anyway, uh, so uh, they, they have a, a long time that they support the CPUs and, and uh, a lot of times, you know, there's stock in the warehouses or some products in the shops which don't have uh, the, the right BIOS. And if you then buy a new BIOS, you put it in, it doesn't work. And then uh, AMD, in, in the, I think in the past, they also had a program they could would ship you a CPU. Uh, I, I think it was a dummy. Uh, that you or some some no no it's it's an old generation but yeah yeah that you can bo uh, boot it up uh, flash the BIOS and then send the CPU back to the AMD yeah. and you can uh, use a new uh, CPU on it uh, but with most so MSI B550 and X550 boards you don't have that but please check the website it's not 100 percent but yeah. I would say 90 percent to maybe 95 uh, percent they have this uh, BIOS button uh, in the back yeah. and you can flash without any problem without any CPU yeah, only so power run. So basically high-end uh, X470, almost all B450 and later boards. So also B550, X570, all should have the BIOS flash button. Or yeah. not all, but most of them, yeah. Any plan on releasing a godlike similar X570 with 4 times M.2? No, n currently not in the planning, but does, does godlike has a, that, that riser card, right? Yeah, it has the expander card. Expander yeah. card, yeah. So you can already do two on the expander. And then two on the board? I think three on the board. There's, there's two to the chipset, one to the CPU, yeah. And then I think you can do two on the expander card. I'm just going to check it. What is it? X570 godlike. I think the, the chat so has I stopped scrolling. Is that possible? Sorry? I think the chat has stopped scrolling. No, 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 no. I scroll back. So oh, okay. Okay. it's too many people with questions. Oh, okay. We can skip it. I mean, no. Yeah, too many questions. Yeah. Is there anything like <laughs> Micro ATX, Unify X? No, sorry. Michiel's not here, so no ITX today. Yeah, indeed, indeed. <laughs> uh, so let's have a look here in the gallery. I think you can uh, clearly see that. Um, so this board has, uh, oh, this you cannot see, sorry. I think, yeah, now you can see my uh, cursor. This board has one, two, three M.2 on the board. And then it has an additional adding card uh, with two uh, additional. So you have five M.2s. Yeah. That should be enough for now. <laughs> you still have SATA ports. <laughs> um. Yeah. So uh, we were talking about Unify, uh, the MOS stamp uh, 67 degrees with this 16-core uh, CPU, and we also have got like that 62 degrees. So, but the price is maybe two and a half, three times higher for got like two and a half, I would say. So um, yeah, it's a totally different beast. Uh, you actually cannot compare them. This is an overclocking record, uh, which I think our to uh, overclocker Top PC uh, made, and, and probably he already improved it, because <laughs> each day I'm getting a new links, like, hey, Eric, another overclocking record, hey, please use this. Um, but this basically is uh, running the new 16 core op, uh, on, on uh, 6.3 uh, gigahertz on all cores, and, and that's important. And uh, this was done with uh, the X570 Godlike. Um, yeah, and, I mean, if we're looking at world records, then the VRM of Godlike, of course, is better than B550 uh, Unify. Uh, but B550 Unify for B550 is very strong. It's already very close. I think it's up there with the Ace. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So. Ace also has 14 plus 2, yeah. and uh, this one also. So I'm going to do a lucky draw, uh, Ruud. Um, maybe you pick something from the chat. Okay, that's not possible. Yeah, that's not chat, possible. <laughs> chat disappeared when you <laughs> click the, <laughs> the draw. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so today uh, we have a giveaway for uh, Assassin's Creed for Hala, uh, because next week we're going to announce our bundle. Uh, next week we're also going to talk about uh, the game for Hala, and we're going to do benchmarks. We're going to do on a, a new ultra-wide monitor, uh, curved. Um, and yeah, this bundle will be on motherboards, uh, cases, uh, power supplies, Water cooling and this chair. Oh, we also have the chair. This may be interesting. Maybe, maybe I'm going to check if we I, if we can give away a chair next week. Isn't that funny? That's better than a game code. Now, will you bring it then to the 
Well, we have to see. We have to see. Uh, if, okay. if they're living in somewhere uh, warm, like Hawaii or Thailand, oh, yes, okay. no, problem. Yeah. no problem. No um, problem. So the first winner uh, of our uh, giveaway, uh, we won a uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, game code, is um, Admiralen and then a number. Well, anyway, congratulations. And later we will draw some more. So please uh, make sure to go to msi.com slash 2 slash insider or Google for MSI uh, insider landing page. That will also work. Or on both Twitch and on YouTube, our chatbot each five minutes will spam the link. If it's, yeah, that should, that should work. I yeah. want a chair. Yeah. And a dragon. No, we're not going to give away a dragon. Uh, Only chair. Also, one question, if the expander cards can be purchased separately. Nope. No, that cannot because your BIOS needs to be needs to support this. I'm not sure if Ace can support this, but you need to have a separate uh, of an option in the BIOS. Yeah, it might, but yeah. To switch your uh, PCI Express lanes in the right way. Uh, Ruud, yeah. you correct me if I tell some bullshit, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, but you're correct on this one. <laughs> on, on this one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, no guarantees for the future. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, MSI Game Chef is not available in India, so it would be, would be nice. Well, maybe next week you win something. Um, will all B550 boards with Sentry, uh, sorry, will all B550 boards support Sentry out of the box? No, for sure not. But after a BIOS update, what we just explained, uh, you can flash the BIOS without CPU, it will. Uh, basically, I think the B550 uh, can boot. Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah, uh, the you're X570 right. The X570 not because it has a yeah. much older okay. bias. The first one, but yeah, the you're, B550, you're right. I think, is already designed with booting uh, intentions for the Zen yeah. 3. And if you want optimized performance, you still should update. Yeah. But then you're already in the bias, so you can just use mFlash to update it. Okay, uh, that's correct. Um, yeah. Uh, Yonka on uh, YouTube is asking when will B550 Unified become available for purchase. That's in like uh, three weeks, end of this month. Uh, it's shipping already. Also asking about selling price. Yeah, pricing is about 300. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm, I will later announce this, but let's say 300 USD around that. Okay. 300 euro, 300 USD. I have I have pricing in euro in USD for the X and the non X. So. Let's talk about this uh, motherboard. Because these are two motherboards. The left one is uh, our uh, B550 Unify, and the one on the right is our B550 Unify X. And the only difference is that the X has only two DIMM slots. They dropped off somewhere. <laughs> you cannot find them anymore. Um, but there's more to that. Because it only has two DIMM slots for overclocking. And this also means it has a different PCB. So the uh, memory routing is optimized. Uh, because if you have two DIMM, it's not that we left out the DIMM slot 1 and DIMM slot 4. Or I should say 0 and 3, correct? Anyway, um, it's not that we left out two DIMM slots. No, uh, the, the, DIMMs, the two DIMMs which are still there are moved closer to the CPU socket. Because in the CPU there is a memory controller. And yeah, we optimize the uh, memory routing. Uh, so later more, we have a lot of memory overclocking records, uh, some really amazing ones. And, and um, yeah, you will see. They have the same VRM, they have all the same other features. So if, if you're into overclocking, both of the boards work. If you also want to overclock your memory and make some really great uh, world records, then uh, the Unify X is for you. If you have only two DIMMs, like uh, you buy a kit of, of 2 times 8, 16, also works on the one on the left. <laughs> yep. well, I'm just, just saying. Some people might think uh, if I buy a DIM kit with 4 DIMs or like 32 gig, uh, uh, 4 times 8, I need to have the Unify. And I only can use Unify X if I only have 2 DIMs. No. The Unify X on the right is for overclock. So maybe, Ruud, you can show this board. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, sorry, we don't have the X, the 2 DIMs on hand. No. And that one is, I believe, also not shipping. Should be shipping beginning next week somewhere. Yeah, maybe show it. Yeah, what, what do you want to see? 
Yeah, maybe uh, talk a little bit about this bar. So um, I can uh, hold it like this or with the detail. Camera. Yeah, you already see two test setups over there. Uh, yeah. So uh, one on the left and the other one, uh, Ruud is holding the board, so he still needs to assemble it back together. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> fingers crossed that it still works <laughs> as planned. I already <laughs> had so many shit during live streams that I need to assemble <laughs> yeah. something yeah. and it's not working or I, I don't connect the connector the, the right way. Yeah. The, the, Probably something silly uh, might, yeah. Yeah, might they, go they wrong. hold a little bit. Uh, if, if, yeah, indeed, indeed. So like this, this is Unify. Um, yeah, really special is of course the M.2 uh, slots that it has four M.2s, and uh, three of them are uh, Gen 4 by 4. Yes. If you use the lanes from the CPU, so that's the secret. It uses the lanes from the CPU. Yeah. So, so later we're going to show you yeah. what is all possible with that. Uh, yeah. it, it's quite complex. Ruud and me, we also had a, a several calls and talks with our one, yeah. with our headquarters about. Okay, so if you do this, then this, then this. Yeah. It, it has all kind of switching capabilities, but also lanes are shared, and some uh, also SATA ports are shared. So. It's complex, but it's also very flexible. So yes. uh, it, it will, yeah, it will cater to a lot of users that will do a lot of storage uh, uh, combinations. Yeah. Yeah. I even don't know why this board is called B550 Unify. It should be called B550 Storage King. Is that not a better name? No, I still like the Unify uh, okay. styling. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so um, this one, uh, if we talk about the CPU VRM, this one has a, a 14 plus two. Uh, yeah. VRM, so it's the same like uh, X570 Ace. Yeah, and it has a massive, massive uh, heatsink uh, for the most part of the, the VRM. Yeah. Um, this one, the top one, is smaller, but it's also linked with a uh, with a uh, heat pipe. Heat pipe, and um, also the top is uh, there's also some. Uh, phases there for the SOC, so it doesn't draw that much power. Yeah, so this is a 14 plus 2 uh, yeah. VRM design, 90 uh, amp yeah. uh, power stages. So there's uh, like 10 phases on, on the, the big block and only 4 phases for the uh, cores on, on the smaller block. Yeah. Uh, and then also the, yeah, the cooling from the backside will help. Indeed. Um, because it, yeah, the heat is uh, spread there at most. Infinite Fabric Ryzen 5000 is clocked max at 2000. Well, I have a surprise for you later. Let me remove the M.2. Oh, uh, you're not going to do a teardown? Uh, teardown maybe later, but we'll, we'll still just, need just, to have it running. Just removing the M.2. <laughs> yeah, just removing the, the M.2 uh, heatsinks. Those are quite nice heatsinks as well uh, with uh, thermal padding. RGB uh, have, has left the main board. Um, <laughs> yes, on this one it has. Yeah, yeah. well, not, not 100% because yes, this, this uh, main board has no RGB, no. Uh, but it still has the pin headers. So if yep. you want to have RGB in your case or somewhere, and you all know RGB makes things faster, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a color coding for it. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> So we have three uh, M.2s populated at Doom the moment. Doom benchmarks. I don't know. Yeah, all NVMe. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah. here. Uh, Some people like to see the, the ports as well. Yeah, so you now took yeah. three. Um, yeah, basically it's uh, uh, three Western Digital Black SN 850s, uh, one terabyte, and uh, those are the new faster. Uh, Maybe you can show the packing. Four. You also have it oh, there. Oh, the packing! Yeah, I got the uh, one packing, and these are really, really fast. Yeah, I'll show you later. Yeah, later yeah. we'll go in more detail. We're going to do benchmarks yeah. about storage. So, um, <coughs> yeah, and these are each one terabyte. Um, if we uh, talk about the um, uh, let me see, uh, the cooling, um, the, maybe you can take one out, Ruud? Uh, and, uh, one, yeah, one I already two took SSD? out the uh, M.2 cooling, or what, uh, do you mean something also? else? Also? Uh, well, I, wa I want to show them the double-sided... <laughs> Where? Where's the screwdriver? <laughs> Where's the screwdriver? <laughs> oh my god. Did I already lose something? Well, uh, quite hang possible. On, hang on. Is it below the keyboard? No. I see... Oh. Oh, here it is. <laughs> yeah, got it. 
So basically it has four and I only showed three. So let's remove this one as well. You're a marketing guy. First show them three and then, oh, but there's more. Yeah. It doesn't have one. Uh, how is it Apple doing that? It doesn't have two. Oh, there's one more thing. It doesn't thing. have three. It has four <laughs> and not two. Yay. Yeah. And uh, the fourth one, um, that one's connected to the uh, chipset. So that is Gen 3 times 4. Yeah, so later we'll go Michael. all in detail. Yeah. Uh, can you maybe show the inside of uh, the, the heatsink? Yeah, sure. sure. So uh, what's also special about this one is that it has a double-sided uh, cooling uh, on the M.2 slots. So cooling pads. And yeah, so this is on top. And then if you look below. Yeah. Don't forget to remove uh, uh, the protective foil. Yeah. Right, Peter? <laughs> right, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's watching. <laughs> yeah. No, maybe not. Maybe no? he's working in his yeah, house. Yeah, he's doing with Redecorating. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so double-sided. And, and this, what is the temperature difference? I don't know exactly. I thought you had it in the slide. No, they no, told me somewhere, uh, I think uh, it was like 8 to 10 degrees. No, I thought HQ had even better numbers, but no, I, I, I didn't measure it. I didn't have time to, to measure everything. Yeah, I was we, just going today, for performance this time. Yeah, today is all about performance. And anyway, it helps with uh, cooling down and, and cooling an M.2 SSD basically means that it, uh, uh, the, yeah, it, starts, uh, it doesn't start throttling or not as yeah. fast and then it can finish the benchmark, or if, let's say it can transfer data faster, so it finishes benchmarks or transfer data faster. Oh, uh, right. So it's basically faster. So it's not about heat. No, mostly it's for benchmarking because if you just transfer data, then the driver will be full before it overheats. Yes. So yeah. And where do you get the data from? So yeah. Well, if you have three, then data moving is very fast. So Let's talk a little bit about cooling. Uh, Ruud already highlighted some uh, some items. So on the back we have a MOS uh, base plate. We have uh, how do you pronounce this? A seven watt MK. The, the uh, thermal pads. Yeah, the, the seven watt uh, per meter Kelvin. Yeah. Per, oh, per meter Kelvin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thermal pads. So it means that the, the thicker the material, yeah, the, the more resistance it has. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the heatsink is completely aluminium covered. The board is also, yeah, I don't want to say heavy, but yeah. Yeah, it's quite heavy because... Uh, the, the I didn't want to say heavy, but you say heavy, okay. I say heavy because the, the heatsink is really, really yeah. big, massive. Uh, it got a lot of uh, uh, ribs to, for the airflow uh, uh, to, to take the heat away. And uh, yeah, it's just heavy. <laughs> Metal is heavy, it can, yeah, can go. Ooh, this is a good question. X5, which one is better, X570 Unify or B550 Unify? Uh, I think they're pretty close. Yeah, should be. Uh, anyway, this I, one. I think the, the Unify one is, uh, the, the X570 Unify is a little bit more expensive. So if you don't need uh, like 16 lanes on your GPU and, and also the extra uh, M.2, uh, Gen 4, then I think the B550 is a better deal. Yes, because in benchmarking yeah. you don't notice the difference no. that much. No, and I, I think that the overclocking part is also very close because the power circuit is also uh, identical or at yeah. least yeah, close to identical. Yeah. Uh, so we already talked a little bit about uh, VRM uh, of this one, uh, so 14 phase uh, 90M. Um, we also have some uh, new world records with this. So uh, single core, uh, 6.1 gigahertz on the uh, 3600 XT. So it's not Vermeer. Uh, I'm not sure when we will release the Vermeer uh, benchmarks or world records. I should say world records. All core, also 6 gigahertz and Cinebench uh, 25.85 uh, points on the 6 core. So all three world records and you can find them back on, uh, on HWBOT. And this is the screenshot from uh, CPU-Z. So, yeah, we already talked about cooling. Uh, can well, you maybe show the I.O. panel? Or are we already yeah, putting yeah. it back together? No, no, I just put the M.2s back. Yeah, uh, so... This is uh, the I.O. panel again. Mm. Yeah, so uh, Ruud already focusing. talked about the buttons on the left. So the bottom button is the... Uh, Flash BIOS uh, button, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Uh, on top you have the clear CMOS button. W when should I use this clear CMOS button, Ruud? 
<laughs> if it doesn't boot up anymore. So usually it's needed when you do overclocking. Okay, but <laughs> you go what if far. I remove the battery? Is that the same? No, that's the same, yeah. Okay, so basically yeah. it's shortcutting the battery? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a PS2 port still there. Uh, so please yeah. let us know what you think about the PS2. Yeah. I mean... Who, uh, who's yeah, using a PS2 uh, still? I know Michiel is. Yeah, but Michiel is a special, <laughs> sp special item. Special breed. Yeah. yeah. Michiel is uh, uh, completely in love with all kinds of keyboards and mouse, and he wants to test everything, no matter if that's PS2 or USB or whatever. Uh, he wants to test it, and he's all, uh, noisy. Uh, one question: uh, Does it have a, a, three, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 header? Yes, it does. Uh, and it's up here. Or header, it's uh, it's a different kind of connector, but it's it's for the front panel uh, of your case. Yeah, and it's called a Type E connector. Yeah, and uh, more and more cases now are uh, supporting uh, Type C yeah. on the front, and then you need that kind of uh, connector. So on the I/O, uh, you also have uh, more USB ports. You have HDMI, uh, HDMI of course, where you want to use Renoir. Yeah. Uh, what's the CPU called? 4000. Yeah, the 4000 series. Yeah. Yeah, but what's 4007? Oh, I'm not sure about yeah, it. Yeah, I also don't know. Anyway, Renoir, uh, yeah. the, 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 the I, APUs. I think we had a live stream about that with the 4650G or something. Something like that. 4670G? I don't know. That's why we need Martijn. He knows all those uh, uh, model names. Yeah, but Renoir is not on the uh, retail market, so... That's also true. That's also That's true. Um, then we have 2.5 gig uh, LAN. Uh, so yeah, I mean, more and more people are asking for this, but please, re yeah, remember that you also need a, a router uh, or a switch. You know, uh, you need uh, enough bandwidth for your internal network to support this and cabling. I think CAT 6E you need for this. Um, Type C uh, USB connector as uh, as well on the back. Uh, USB 3.0. 3.2, yes. So yeah, that's 10 it's gigabits. It's USB 10 gig. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Wi-Fi, Intel Wi-Fi AX. So actually Wi-Fi 6, it's called nowadays. Yeah. And there you have your, um, yeah, your audio part uh, with uh, 5.1 audio uh, in jacks and also SPDIF connector. Yeah. And I hope uh, Shield, maybe Richard can show. It's integrated. Yeah, it's uh, uh, screwed onto the uh, heatsink of the uh, yeah. VRM. So yeah. I really don't know why we didn't do this many years ago. I lost so yeah. many IO shields. I suggested it many years ago. That's good. Yeah. Uh, also, one question: uh, How many USB three headers there are available on the board? Uh, it, it basically has. Uh, Can you maybe angle it a little bit? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, like it, that. It has uh, uh, on the bottom. This one has uh, two ports: USB uh, three, five gig. Three point one. Three point one Gen. Something. No, three point two Gen one. Yeah. It's and so then, complex. Yeah, then it has the type E. So that's So ma maybe we just talk about 5, 10 and 20 gig, right? Yeah, I usually call it USB 5, USB 10. Yeah, so USB this is USB 20. 10. Yeah, this one is USB 10 and it has uh, uh, only pins for one port, so it's one type C. Yeah. And this one, uh, sorry, <laughs> other side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the camera. Yeah, always like this. <laughs> anyway, it's married. Uh, and the USB has uh, two uh, USB 3 or USB 5 uh, ports in this uh, pin header. So if you connect the cable to your front panel, you will have two uh, regular Type A uh, 5 gig USB ports. I somebody from Russia or Ukraine. I sorry, I cannot pronounce your name. Do you read Cyrillic? That's no. Anyway, uh, he's talking about dra repair the Dragon Center, please. Yes, we're working on that. Uh, we talked about, I think, two weeks ago or maybe last week. Uh, we're working on fixing Dragon Center because we know uh, there are some really annoying issues with it. Yeah, uh, yeah our software team is working on it. I um, write many emails about that. Yeah. Uh, some other stuff which you you already can find is on the uh, website. We don't have it here because we, like what we said, <laughs> we always get engineering boards, so it's a white box. You open it up, there's some, some plastic and some air bubble stuff in, and then you have a motherboard. And then you hope the motherboard is like final look and feel. And that's uh, what we're working with. Uh, but this is also in the retail box, and uh, basically it's a do-it-yourself stand, uh, so you can assemble it and you can put your motherboard on there. The fan is not included. Um, Should uh, yeah. I put the, the, the system back together so we can demo it later on? What? The, 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 uh, the B550 system. 
Should I assemble it so we can? Oh yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you can assemble. Okay. You you can assemble. Yeah. Okay. So we already talked about the double-sided uh, uh, shield and the two shield frozer. Uh, so basically with the heatsink on there and, and thermal pads on both sides. So Ruud is going to put the system uh, yeah. back together. Um, yeah, that's for later. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm, yeah, I'm take this view. So you, uh, Ruud, how much thermal paste do you put on there? <laughs> Whoa, what? I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always a topic, I know. Uh, it, it's about this, so uh, I just make like a, a, a square in the middle, and then the pressure will, uh, yeah, disperse. Uh, <laughs> shocking! Oh. Shocking? Who says shocking? Me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> before I, I did, I put too much on, so I had to clean it. Uh, that, that's really, yeah, problematic. Anyway, I, I'm going to do a lucky draw uh, for. No protective foil, huh? Okay. Okay, Just the draw. So I'm going to switch to the main uh, now. Uh, so uh, this week we have uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Valhalla. Valhalla. It's like heaven for Vikings, right? Uh, giveaway. Uh, so uh, if you go to Amazon.com uh, slash two slash insider or you Google, because I think I'm not sure if the URL is working. Uh, if you Google for Amazon insider landing page. Uh, you can also in our uh, YouTube and Twitch channel each five minutes our spam bots uh, spams the URL. I hope it works. I checked in the beginning of the live stream. So um, yeah, um, this is a nice game. Next week we're going to do a live stream with it. Uh, so the next winner is Daka. I oh that's that's sorry that's wrong that's something else. Uh, Rahanal Islam. Rahan al Islam. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Ruud, you want to do better? Yeah, Rahan al Islam. Rahan, yeah, anyway. Uh, anyway, like you will get an email with the game code in uh, the coming days. Uh, congratulations. Uh, enjoy the game. And um, yeah, you can still participate. Uh, go to this uh, website, you can uh, sign up. We're also looking into the coming, I, I'm not going to make promises, but we want to uh, award people, you know, our, our viewers who are there each week, uh, a lot of people. And we want to give them a bigger chance to win something. So we're working on that, still need some time. You'll hear more about that. Um, why doesn't OC work on Amazon motherboards? Well, that's a, that's a difficult question to answer with so little information. What mainboard, what CPU, what memory, what OC? Because basically OC is pretty easy. Uh, it depends on the motherboard. If you have an H410, then a overclock <laughs> yeah, is not indeed, really indeed, possible. Yeah, indeed, 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 yes. <coughs> so fingers crossed, hopefully it works. Okay. Can and a CPU that is seated, uh, of not seated properly cause uh, to lose OC functionality? No, then it will just not work. It either works or it doesn't work. Ruud, agree? What? Can a CPU which is not seated properly uh, lose OC functionality? I would say it works or it doesn't work. Uh, Cooling I think is for more the an Intel issue. ones with, uh, with the sockets, uh, sometimes the socket is damaged and not so, yeah, that the, it's seated properly. It means just, yeah, the, if the, the, the socket is damaged, if there's a pin uh, not making contact, yes, that could, or I even if the uh, pin is, uh, uh, is a little bit dirty, then yeah. It can cause uh, it can cause some overclocking issues. Yeah. So the, the faster you go, the, the further uh, or the, the the quicker the, the overclock will fail. So Not make sure that the, the socket is in good condition and also clean. Also clean the contacts on the CPU, and the same goes for the AMD. So keep the pins clean. Yeah. So that, that's basically it. Yeah. And, and just apply uh, enough uh, cooling paste and a, and a good cooler. And then it should work, yeah. Will I be able to use the uh, 5900 on uh, AM4 motherboards without conflicts? Depends on what model, what chipset, uh, but basically, yes. If you are not into overclocking, because then the model uh, also is important, what model you have. <coughs> okay. How hard is it to swap an Intel motherboard uh, for an AMD one? Well. 
not that difficult. Just yeah. Well, um, you basically need to replace everything. The memory you can keep. You need a new CPU. You need new memory. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you need a new CPU and, and a mainboard. Memory you can keep. VJ will work as well. Yeah. And most cases are quite easy to open, and the rest is just uh, easy screws. Just remember where you put the screws. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, Ruud, what I'm first going to uh, show is a complicated story. Complicated story. Okay. So, we already said this board has uh, four. M.2 slots. And you basically can run this in CPU mode and in, I don't know how it's called. Chipset mode. Oh, chipset mode. Okay. So yeah. CPU mode, chipset mode. So four slots. Uh, we call them M.2 uh, underscore one, two, three, and four. And here, and this is on the product page, so if you go uh, to uh, the MSI website and you go to B550 uh, Unify X or Unify, this layout is the same. The only difference between the boards is the memory performance uh, and the, the number of uh, DIMM slots. I should say different. X has only two DIMM slots, and that's why the memory performance is better. That's a better story. Okay, so first slot. You have two options for that. Either you run uh, it in uh, PCI Express uh, Gen 4 mode from the CPU. It's what you normally get. But you can also switch it to SATA mode, and that's quite unique. Because normally, if you switch to SATA mode on the B550, you lose two ports from your SATA. So um, then uh, port 5 and 6 will be disabled. Not in this case. So here it means that you can uh, run this in SATA mode, this in Gen 4, this in Gen 4, and if you want to, this in Gen 3. Because the last slot is Gen 3. Then the second slot. Uh, CPU mode is Gen 4, so you can run in CPU mode slot 1 and 2 in Gen 4 mode. And the, section, sorry, the second option is in uh, chipset mode, then you get PCI Express Gen 3. And you get, to be exact, PCI Express Gen 3 X2. Because these two slots will be disabled. Yeah. To, to be honest, what can you put in here, Ruud? Do you <laughs> have something? Like maybe, maybe uh, I, I think a card. capture card. No, capture card also X4. Also X4, yeah. Uh, I, I don't have many um, uh, yeah, single lane. No, may, maybe a uh, one gigabyte card. Mm, yeah, I could, yeah. Maybe also too slow. But you already have 2.5 gigabit LAN on the board. Correct. Uh, for uh, sure, there will be people who say uh, I think audio, audio cards, my audio yeah. card. People who want to have special or special things on audio. Yeah, they, they that, will that put could in. be. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if you want this slot in, in chipset mode, those two will be disabled, and then this uh, yeah. uh, this M.2 slot, M.2 M.2 underscore two, will run in uh, Gen 3 mode X2, so two lanes. I'm going to skip uh, M.2 underscore three because that's the most complex one. <laughs> this is easy. Yeah. Uh, so this one does not support um, Gen 4. No. It supports Gen 3 by four from the PCH or from the chipset, yeah. always, not switchable. However, if you use this slot, this slot will be disabled. So the PCI Express slot will be disabled. Yeah. And if you look really carefully, you see here the, the gold fingers or the solder points. So you see it's up to here and then you know it's, it's X4. Yeah. The pins are also only up to four. Yeah. Now the complex part. Ta-da! Four <laughs> options for this one. So in CPU mode, it will support PCI Express Gen 4. By Same yeah. like the second slot and the same like the first slot. So basically, you can do one, two, three times Gen 4 on this motherboard. Yeah, that's what we're going to show. Yeah. That's what we're going to focus and benchmark today. Yeah. Uh, you can also switch this to SATA, and if you use this one in SATA mode, you will lose one slot here. Still, you have more ports available than uh, normal or uh, than on any other uh, B550 board. Then we can also run this in chipset mode. Then you will disable two ports here, two SATA ports, and then it will run in PCI 
Express mode. And I think, Ruud, correct me if I'm wrong, this is PCI Express Gen 3 by 4? Uh, by 2. By also by 2? Yeah. That number oh, is also by two, yeah. Okay, because you lose two ports, each one is, yeah, this is the, yeah. the flexible I.O. Intel calls this. <laughs> it's not Intel. No, but Intel calls <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. I, no. I don't know how AMD uh. calls it. But basically, it's a big puzzle, a big table, how we can switch all the lanes. Yeah. And normally, on, on most mainboards, this is done, yeah, I want one here, and then you disable two, nobody uses SATA anymore. But we got a lot of uh, uh, feedback from uh, customers. Yeah, I still want to use SATA devices. I have a lot of hard drives. Um, and can you make uh, that these ports don't uh, disconnect? So our overclocker top machine looked into that and he made this configuration. Uh, and yeah, we know it's complex, but also because of that, very flexible. Yeah. Chipset mode, PCI Express Gen 3 by 2. Thank you, Ruud, for correcting me. And also in SATA mode. Yeah. So... Long story short, it's very flexible and you can run, I think that's the key message for many people, you can run three PCI Express Gen 4 on By this four. motherboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to show, Ruud. Yeah. Do so that's why it's competing with the X570, because X570 indeed? also has uh, three uh, Gen 4 by 4s. Yeah. And this one can do that too. Are you already up and running? Uh, yeah, it's running, yeah. D can you move the cursor on the other board? So... What do you mean uh, on the other This board? one, is this moving, the Unify? X570? Oh, the Unify X570? Yeah, still yeah, live. Yeah. And this is B550? Yeah. Also live. Yeah, it's there. Oh, nice. Yeah, so We're this using is... using NDI, so, yeah. Uh, like, like each week, the disclaimer. Yeah, the disclaimer is we use NDI if you do also uh, for capturing GPU benchmarking like the, the game we're going to show. Uh, it, it will uh, in the in the stream or in the capture it will look very stuttery, uh, but in in the, the on my monitor it will show just very fluent. Yeah, we can show and, that to yeah. the people. I also have an uh, afterburner OSD, so you can watch what the frame rate really does. Uh, instead, you will see it's going to be choppy a little bit. Um, so first, what we're going to show, um, I think, is the, the PCI Express, uh, how it's divided. Um, I'm going to use uh, HW Info for that. And we've zoomed in a little bit. So basically, you can see here that it's a, a, a 5950X. I'm not sure if, if it's readable on screen. Um, and it also says it has a Mac B550 Unify motherboard in it. Uh, um, we can also can people see read this? That the, the graphic card is the 39 Gaming X Trio, and uh, that one is running at PCI Express uh, 4, but now it's only running at by 8. Or <coughs> and that's because I've changed 8 lanes of the PCI Express by 16 slot to 2 M.2 uh, uh, ports. So the port 2 and the port 3 are now using the, the, the CPU lanes. So meaning they are also Gen 4. And that will help us with uh, the performance of the, uh, of the SSDs. Um, there is a complicated one uh, showing that it's uh, current link speed. Of, uh, of this is uh, showing up as SanDisk, but it's a Western Digital uh, uh, drive. Um, I think both have the same uh, vendor ID. And it's uh, by 4 and 16 uh, giga transfers per second. So that's uh, the Gen 4. Uh, this is the chipset. No, nothing is no M.2 is connected to that one. All of them. Also, here's the, the graphic card. It's by 8. It's running at 2.5 giga transfers per second. So it means it's running at Gen 1 mode, but that's just a power saving mode. So if you start up a 3D application, it will switch back to Gen uh, 4 mode. So eight, uh, eight lanes uh, um, by four, uh, by eight for the graphic card is more than enough. Even, even four lanes is more than enough. Also, this uh, drive, we have three of them. So yeah, I'm going to show all three of them are running at four and 16 gig transfers uh, per second. Rick, so, some questions I want to answer. Okay. Sorry. Um, I'll just move along so you will see all of them are the same. So let's see what the speed does, right? Or are there other questions? Yeah, so uh, let me see too many questions <laughs> again to catch up. 
Um, uh, 59x will be alright in, in Unify. Yeah, no problem at all. It's perfect for that. Yeah. Uh, what is the cost of the board? Around, uh, let me see, or if we got around 300 US dollar. Let's say like that. Uh, Europe, 300 euro, including VAT. Uh, did you study engineering? No, I studied uh, communication. <laughs> That's why my English is, has this accent, probably. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a hobby what I do here. Um, yeah, continue, Ruud. Okay, yeah. Uh, so this is too much information for the, the screen. Uh, I think that the, the speed of the SSDs will show itself uh, when we run a benchmark like uh, Crystal Dismark. And... Uh, so, Ruud, maybe uh, let me uh, quickly, um, one moment, uh, quickly show what SSDs we're using. Yeah, um, okay. I have to, the, let me see, what is this? Okay, um, switch to this one. So, uh, today we're using uh, Western Digital Black uh, SN850. Uh, they just launched, I think, two weeks ago or something. Uh, maybe three weeks ago. And they are blazing fast. Should I maybe let you do the benchmark or already yeah, show the performance? I think, I think the performance numbers will show itself. Okay, then later we, we, we go into the 500, 1 terabyte, and 2 terabyte, what the difference is between them. Uh, usually only the write speed will uh, change a little bit. Uh, so I have uh, four drives. One is the C drive, it's a very slow old SATA drive. Uh, that's just my Windows drive, it's uh, more flexible. so. I can also play around with uh, the other M.2s. Uh, maybe later we can do also the soft rate uh, if we think it's good uh, or if we have time. Uh, but uh, D, E and F are, should all give very similar scores. So I'll just run the benchmark and uh, the numbers should pop up. Uh, especially the read speed will uh, be very impressive. Somebody saying uh, Crystal Dismark, uh, it's not gaming. Uh, what does it do for games? Well. You're completely right. I mean, this is just yeah. a synthetic benchmark. It will give you a number and it doesn't help you anything. Yeah. However, Ruud will later show you how you can use this uh, speed uh, and to benefit it from it, transferring files. For example, if you have um, big games or big yeah, video yeah. files which yeah. need to be transferred. Yeah. He also has a little trick on how you can do this faster than what Windows can do. Yeah, Win Windows is holding back your SSD. So um, yeah. uh, I think people should pay attention. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't have a clue why it is, but I've also seen a lot of uh, storage reviews uh, that people claim that it's the SSD caching that's making the, 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 the transfer slow down. But actually it's Windows, it's File Explorer that's not giving you the full speed. Yeah. Now I will show you with this drive or these drives uh, that it can do a lot faster than File Explorer uh, shows you. Yeah. And uh, you talk about gaming, yeah, next gaming, year it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, if you already no, have not yet. The next year, yeah. uh, direct uh, storage will come out from. Uh, yeah. uh, I games. think today or no, in, in I think two, I think next. I don't know this weekend or maybe around. Let's say in the coming week, the the new uh, PlayStation Four and the new Xbox Series X, yeah. I believe, and and yeah, that one uh, will launch, and they are having new technologies on board, uh, which you can benefit for games. So basically. Yeah. Um, now you load your data uncompressed uh, for the game uh, from a hard drive in, in most uh, previous gen uh, games, but also these games are also used on your PC. And this is not that fast. So with uh, PCI Express Gen 4, uh, you increase the speed a lot. And what you see yeah, here on the lot. screen is 7... 7,000 megabytes per yeah. second, yeah. So and that, that's right really fast. over 5,000. Uh, uh, megabytes per second as well. Yeah, and with direct storage, basically you can uh, use the speed to uh, have an uh, interface to your system uh, to transfer compressed data, and then the GPU, and both NVIDIA and uh, RTX 30, and the big Navi, uh, so 6800, 6000 series basically, uh, can decompress this. So yeah. This will totally change games because now yeah. there is a lot of artificial level design that you walk into an elevator because it's loading game data in the background. Later, yeah. it's streaming the textures and the level data so you can walk around freely without uh, having any annoying load time. So that is why Gen 4 is very important for gaming. 
However, to be honest, we first need to wait until NVIDIA releases the direct storage uh, API, I would say. It's like DirectX. Then we need games which uh, benefit from this, and this will all take some time. But it doesn't matter. Progress takes time. The plan is there. And this is also now something, I mean, do you play a lot of games? Uh, when will this technology come out? I, 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 if, I, if I'm correctly, it will be beginning 2021, but <laughs> that can be June, you never yeah. know. Um, but let's wait and see. But this is something when you consider your next buy, uh, your next uh, yeah, PC basically, it's something to consider to go for Gen 4. So uh, tell me, what are your benchmarks? Because I yeah. see one, two, three. So I, I've told that we've had, uh, we are having uh, three uh, Western Digital SN850 SSDs in this motherboard. Yeah. And to prove it. the point that I'm using Gen 4x4, uh, uh, I'm benchmarking all three of them. And uh, well, Gen 3x4 would top out around yeah, 3600. And uh, this one, uh, all go way beyond uh, 3600 megabytes per second so they're running definitely uh, gen 4 by 4 otherwise this would not be possible no and um, i'm just running uh, the quickest one uh, with the, uh, the q depth of eight um, but because it shows the nicest numbers uh, and i can do the same as this one uh, but it just takes more time um, and i think uh, i can show you uh, more interesting stuff um, so these uh, drives all are just as fast as the, the first drive that's connected directly to the uh, CPU. So there's no difference uh, in, in speed. Sometimes, it's actually faster. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I think if you run it 10 times, it will just be average the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, more or less the, the speeds will be the same. So uh, I've uh, numbered also the SSDs. So I also show which SSD is in which slot. Um, and let's take the first one because there's my video folder. There's some video streams there. And if I move them with File Explorer <coughs> to the second SSD, to a second SSD, can be the, 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 in the two, number two slot or in the, oh, that's the same, sorry. Um, my zooming is quite big, so. Uh, <laughs> And you have uh, glasses. Should be yeah, double. I don't need glasses, but it's uh, more clear on the stream. So uh, yeah. I'm just going to uh, copy and paste yeah, what people do a lot. And they will, they will see, oh, wow, it's three gigabytes per second. Oh, it's dropping a little bit. So many storage reviews say, OK, now the, the cache might be huh, already full and it's dropping to 2.7, 2.8. And um, that's about the speed. So uh, I've timed it before, and this was about uh, when I timed it, it was 16.4 seconds. And um, I, I done some research and uh, also got a, a, a small uh, program called Fast Copy. Well, very apt name for it. <coughs> the icon looks like from 9083. Yeah, the, the interface doesn't uh, do much. Yeah, so first we need to clean the video folder uh, from the drive. Otherwise, it will just be finished really immediately because the files are already there. So we're going to permanently delete this, so there's no caching. It's also 50 gigs, so it's not possible for uh, Windows to cache this. Um, I can do a reboot and it will just show you the same speed. And let's yes, see. Yes, this is single drive performance. This is single drive performance. So this is a Gen 4 uh, uh, Western Digital SN850 to another uh, Gen 4 uh, Western Digital uh, SN850. And here it goes the speed. And it's a little bit faster than the 2.8 we saw before. So it's 4.7 gigabytes per second. So it finishes in 9.6 seconds instead of 16 uh, seconds. So that's quite a big difference. Yeah. And uh, I've tested it on multiple SSDs. It's not just the Western Digital. It's all fast This SSDs. is your, your, your personal uh, assignment the last few months, well, weeks, I, right? I was testing USB 20 gig. Uh, with the uh, uh, Western Digital Black uh, P50 game drive. And um, I was just wondering why it didn't go faster than, it, it went around 1100 
uh, megabytes per second, but the USB interface can go up to two gig, right? So uh, I was wondering, can we speed up that process? And uh, yeah, okay, so I, I've read a lot of reviews and they say, okay, it might be caching because the write speed is, is not, uh, if you uh, write directly to the, uh, to the NAND, it will not be that, that fast when, when, once the, the cache has been uh, filled up. Um, but it turns out that you can go a lot faster than File Explorer. So I tried a lot of programs, also the RoboCopy, I tried TerraCopy, I tried another one, Extreme Copy, uh, and there was another one, I forgot the name, it was a copy extension or something. Uh, I've tried multiple ones, also with uh, different parameters, so XCopy and RoboCopy, you can also do uh, some direct uh, storage uh, access. Uh, None of them were faster than File Explorer, except one, and that, that was this one. And yeah. it's freeware as well, so. And yeah. does this uh, program, it's available for free? Yeah, it's a freeware program. Yeah. And, and does, does, do, do they describe why they are so fast? They say they have their own uh, scheduling thing or whatever, um, but it's not very clear why it's faster. Hmm. Uh, I've seen uh, good results in, yeah, well, with, with old storage, uh, with uh, the, the TerraCopy one, uh, when we were testing USB 10 gig. Yeah. Remember that time? That was yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. with the SoundDisk Extreme. Um, and that was already challenging because some media used XCopy and it didn't show the real performance that, yeah. that we got with the benchmarking, but also with the File Explorer. So mm -hmm. at that time, File Explorer was faster than the XCopy speed. So w we were discussing, okay, how can you benchmark this properly? Um, in File Explorer, that's what people do. Eh? They, they do uh, uh, drag and drop and, and just cut and paste and or copy and paste. And, uh, so, uh, but if that's not fa the fastest way, why why not look for other uh, alternatives? And, and this is a very good one. How can so, you how can you explain that that uh, Crystal Disk Mark shows higher performance because that should also be bottlenecked by yeah, Windows then or not? R remember those numbers from uh, Disk Mark? Uh, yeah, seven thousand. Uh, yeah, but 62. the write speed is 5,300. Yeah. So if I, I would run this again, um, let, let's remove this one. And I, I'm a bit disappointed by uh, 4.7 uh, gigabytes, uh, to be honest, because before I got 5.1. So oh. I can do it again and see what happens. Yeah. <coughs> oh. oh, it's fluctuating. Maybe it's cleaning up now. Hmm. It's only four now. Oh, okay. Still faster. It's still faster, but yeah. Uh, I got very consistent results before, and then you, you're going to try and demo it. And that, then, that's yeah. always <laughs> when I click yeah. go live, it always yeah. happens. This is the F drive, uh, which is in the, in the third slot. And uh, I haven't copied anything to it yet, so I also haven't deleted anything from it. So it doesn't do any uh, background cleaning uh, with the trim uh, going on. So let's see what, what that does. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do another uh, lucky draw, Ruth. Yeah. So now it's going up to 5.1. So I if the SSD is busy uh, cleaning up, yeah, it might slow down. But um, uh, I haven't seen File exp uh, Explorer be faster than 3.0 gigabytes per second. And this one is now topping 5.1. So. I think uh, Microsoft has some work to do and, uh, uh, and get into the same speeds as the SSDs yeah. are. Well, I mean, they're working on direct storage, so uh, yeah. they know it's important, especially for yeah. gaming. Uh, but they have this, this, this technology uh, probably from the Xbox. Uh, yeah. uh, the developers of the Xbox, the, the dev team, said, hey, this is a bottleneck. We would need to solve it to design different and better games. So yeah. hopefully it will also speed up the transfer speed in Windows. Yeah. But yeah. It might be totally unrelated. Yeah, it might also be because File Explorer is, is like a, a user program that you can also pause or even uh, cancel or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but for a backup program, I think fast copy is, uh, is the way to go, especially if you move a lot of uh, games. Yeah. And then uh, this, uh, this will be good. Um, sorry. First giveaway. A winner, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so uh, again, um, we have a giveaway today, uh, Sascrit Valhalla, 
Uh, from next week on, we have a bundle action. Uh, you can get this product with uh, motherboards, uh, monitors, uh, MSI, of course. Uh, even a gaming chair, PSU, water cooling, uh, case, etc. Uh, so if you uh, purchase something, uh, and the website will go online next week, so I don't know all the details, which models exactly, which resellers, which country. Please don't ask me. You will find out next week. Um, and that's why today we're going to give away uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla code. And the next winner is uh, FatDox8. So congratulations, FatDox8. Uh, we will email that to you. If you still want to participate, you can go to msi.com slash two slash insider or click on the link on the YouTube and Twitch chat where our spam bot spams it each five minutes. I hope it's not annoying. So guys, if you, if you find the spam bot annoying, just let us know. We can learn from it. Uh, when will the, the Unify X be up for sales in Holland? Well, actually we're shipping at this moment and it should be available worldwide around the end of this month. Uh, but it can also be beginning of December. Uh, price, uh, let me mention the prices. It's 299 US dollar for the Unify X and it's 309 Euro, including 20% VAT in Europe. And the non-X, so the B550 Unify is 289 US dollar for the uh, for US in US dollars and that's without VAT that depends on the states um, and it's 299 euro uh, including 20% VAT in euros but this is just indicative pricing uh, you know this 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 can and will differ per country per reseller um, sorry was unlocking something <laughs> can I pay you and ship this one. Well, you don't want this one. This is an engineering board. Yeah, we, we always we work with engineering boards. And bias. <laughs> yeah. You don't want this one. It's working. It's doing what we want, but it's not the final board. Because we, you know, when we, we are going to do a live stream, we always want to have the hardware earlier. And yeah, it's still not in production. So what do you have? Do you have something that looks final? Just give to us. Have it with most things. Um, Let's maybe, uh, Ruud, go a little bit into um, um, the, uh, the storage we use. So we're using the, the SN850 from Western Digital Black, just released. And what I wanted to show you is the, the three different models they have. Uh, 500 gig, 1 terabyte, and 2 terabyte. And a lot of people, they, you know, they, they see a benchmark of this model and they think, okay, I buy the 500 gig because it's that fast. But the speed differs per model. And basically that's to do with, with uh, how many chips it's using and I'm not that technical. Um, but uh, they also mentioned this on the website. Uh, so it's no, no big secret. But if you go here, the full specs, I believe. She, this one is doing 7000 uh, read, what you can expect from a Gen 4 device. And uh, 4100 uh, megabytes write. And then we go to the... Uh, Two terabyte one, oh, sorry, the one terabyte yeah, one. Yeah, that's the one we're using here. Yeah, that's the one we're using here indeed. Also 7,000, but uh, instead of 5,100, it's 5,300, so it's faster. The other one was 4, 7, right? 41, yes. yeah. And then we go to the, uh, sorry. Two terabyte. Two terabyte one. Speed will be very close, I think. Yeah, so uh, actually the two terabyte one is a bit slower than the one terabyte one. But I think also from, from uh, price performance, I would say that the one terabyte one is the most affordable um, at this moment. But again, check pricing uh, yourself. And uh, we're using the one without heatsink. Uh, that's the one you uh, see in the back. Uh, yeah. But of course, you all, all also have them with heatsink. And um, yeah, maybe you have a Gen 4 motherboard who doesn't have uh, the M.2 slot cooling. And yeah, these cards, they prefer cooling. I don't say they need cooling, but they prefer cooling because uh, that will delay throttling and then you get better performance. Yeah. Also, the two terabyte one has a larger cache. So if you move big chunks of data, then uh, it will uh, run into caching a longer, so. Yeah. Okay, um, Ruud, um, let me see. Yeah. Uh, what we also have is, uh, because this board can run um, in uh, three slots, 
So we also have this one. Uh, this is a hardware RAID. So if you do hardware RAID uh, with the three Western Digital uh, Discs, uh, Gen 4, uh, so the SN850W Black, you can get up to s almost 18,000. Yeah. We so can try that later with the soft RAID, but... Uh, soft RAID will be slower, right? Yeah, probably a little bit slower, but we can try anyway if we like have Like 11 or 12? Yeah. Uh, we've seen 12, but I, I think uh, one drive was running at Gen 3 at that okay. moment, so there was some bias issue there. Okay. Uh, maybe but we'll, we'll, we can tr do uh, later, but um, um, one of the, the games uh, we use for, uh, for, for showing with the old platform uh, is on one of the SSDs. So if I'm going to do soft rate, every data will be deleted. Uh, so we'll do that after the game okay. benchmarking. Sure. Uh, so you, okay, this we do later? Um, so maybe talk a little bit about Unify X and overclocking on memory. Yeah, yeah. we can go back to the yeah. slides. So uh, slides from AMD. Um, basically, the 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 the, uh, the, the Infinity fabric, uh, which is the 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 how the everything, all the chips communicate with each other and with the cache, etc. Uh, that has also a clock speed, and they call it a uh, fabric clock. I found out two days ago. <laughs> right, two, two, two days, yes. And uh, the optimal clock speed for this is uh, in a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, otherwise, you're going to use a divider, and then you're going to cut down on, on clock speeds. And if we're going to look at Matisse, uh, the previous generation, uh, Zen 2, uh, so basically the 3000 series. Um, if you look at the latency, uh, for memory, uh, then the most optimal speed with the latest, oh sorry, with the lowest latency, uh, latency of almost 70, 68.7, is a clock speed of uh, 37.33 on C16. So a lot of information, but this is about memory overclocking. So you have a lot of clock speeds and, and latencies and, and uh, cache latency. Um, but just remember. 37, 33, C16. I think that's the most important here. Vermeer, they improved that. We already showed you that they, they combined the cache, uh, they uh, improved the communication in the chip. And on Vermeer, you see the latency going down. So uh, um, here you see a latency of 68.7. In Vermeer, you can expect the best latency of 53.9. So it's a big improvement. Um, but also on the clock speeds, because uh, somebody already saying in the chat, uh, the, 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 the maximum clock speed is 2000. So uh, for memory, that's 4000. So the maximum clock speed for the infant fabric is 2000. Uh, so now, if we go back to the clock speeds, uh, 37, 33, C16. Now we're talking about 4000, C15. So it has a higher clock speed and lower cache cache latency basically better performance overall and that with a lower latency uh, if you benchmark this so this is most optimal um, however if you have an MSI motherboard uh, and I I don't have a list which uh, all motherboards do this I know our uh, uh, Godlike is doing this and I know our Unify is also capable of it both of them they can run for meer at 4200 so that means a uh, fabric clock of 2100. Uh, so actually, sorry, uh, they can run for more memory at 4200 MHz with a one-to-one -one clock ratio. And here you see this. This is uh, X570. Yeah, it's uh, hidden a little bit behind uh, the MSI Insider logo. But this is X570 Godlike with Vermeer. And Vermeer is just a different name for Zentry. Um, <coughs> with a uh, fabric clock one-to-one. -one. And then... Uh, you can uh, run uh, DDR4 4200, so it's higher, Four C14, and you get a, a delay in the benchmark, uh, i.e. that 64, it's right, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, of 49.5. So if I put that in a, in a, a chart, it looks like this. <coughs> so um, again, uh, this is about having the most optimal memory speed. A lot of people think, oh, I can do 4.6. Yes, you have a higher clock speed, but maybe your overall performance is lower. 
because you are uh, having a higher latency. And that's important. So, um, Andy improved a lot from Matisse. So let's say Zen to, to Zen 3 to Vermeer. They improved a lot. Uh, but we on MSI members improved that even more. So again, AMD most optimal, 53.5 with 4133 C15. And on MSI we can run uh, DDR4-4200C14, so faster on memory and on latency. And with lower latency overall in the benchmark. And this is important for overclocking, because if you are going to overclock, um, you want the highest clock speeds, you know, to, to break world records. Um, and here you have some world records if we talk about Unify X. Sorry, I should not say world records. That's, uh, I don't know if these are world records, probably not. I even, I get a newer benchmark for this in, let me see. Anyway, just let's first talk about uh, just DDR4. Uh, 5000 C14, we can uh, run with a latency of uh, 44.4 uh, nanoseconds in the benchmarks. We can run 5800 stable for gaming, so uh, it boots, it, it runs stable. Uh, we can run 6000 on air, uh, and the MEM uh, test pass is okay. Uh, but this, of course, uh, 6000 is not stable for gaming. And if you go on Allen 2, we can reach uh, 6500 on memory. But let me uh, let me check here. Uh, let me sh sorry. No, I won't be able to do that here. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> I won't be able to do that No, here. no, no, <laughs> no. no. This is matter. an overclocker. He knows his stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I have, uh, maybe it's too small. Um, this one. He sent me, oh, Ruud, now you need to calculate. <laughs> What? Uh, the, the, the memory speed. Usually it's times two, right? Um, where is it? Memory, memory, memory. Above it says, and then it's a CPU speed, right? Anyway, this was 6,000 something. How about screenshot? Does it say anything? No, it doesn't. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure if this is a world record like what I said. It looks like... Uh, There's a board faster. Anyway, this is just out, so he's still uh, playing with it, uh, working with it. Um, and I'm sure, I mean, each week we got some different screenshots, like I already told you. So, um, Ruud, I think uh, we're going to do some benchmarking. Yeah, okay. Let me see if there are any questions. Uh, you want side by side? Uh, side by side would be good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the the biggest improvement for uh, <laughs> then X to the number. Yes, I know. I was looking for the number. Yeah, yeah. See uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, the biggest difference between the the Matisse and the Vermeer, uh, or the biggest improvement, I should say, is the single threaded uh, performance. So sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Ruud. Uh, no so what we have here, we have two systems, um, like you can see here. Ruud, maybe where the, dra the dragon is sitting on the on the GPU of one. No, no. that's this one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's that one. Oh, it's that's the couch in the back. Yeah, yeah it's the couch in the back, of yeah. course. Yeah, it's a oh, green screen background. Yeah, anyway, exactly. that system is uh, uh, X570 Unify, and this is B550 Unify. This yeah. one is using Zen 2, and this one is using Zen 3. So this is 3000 series, and yeah. this is uh, uh, 5000 series. Yeah, Don't so know where the four went. And here you can see it, X570 Unify, the system on the left, with the 3950X. Yeah. And the B550 Unify with the uh, 5950X. And so uh, we are more going to talk about CPU than about the mainboard uh, performance. Because, yeah, different CPUs. So I think, Ruud, we cannot show the mainboard performance, right? Uh, no, we, we didn't do any And we don't have LN2. So uh, overclocking is, yeah, we didn't have time for that. So Yeah. Uh, Well, we did a little bit of uh, Ryzen Master auto overclocking, uh, and that works perfectly fine. Uh, but you need a lot of cooling because um, it, it will go from about 110 watts in stock mode uh, to about 250 watts. So uh, cooling requirements are a bit more than uh, we anticipated. 
uh, and the performance you will get from those extra uh, 100 watts is not that much. So it's yeah, maybe 10 to 12 percent. So um, uh, for 90 percent more power, you will get 12 percent performance. is is not uh, the biggest uh, uh, efficiency uh, achievement. Let's run them uh, side by side. Hopefully, I can start them almost simultaneously. And first, it will run uh, the multi-core. Uh, Cinebench. I will use Cinebench 15 because it's uh, finished quicker, especially the single threaded one. It uh, takes a long time on Cinebench 20. So here we see um, uh, we have another disclaimer, of course, because if you don't run NDI in the background, it will go uh, to about uh, 4800 um, Cinebench 15 uh, points. Uh, so there's already a big uh, or 10 percent increase in performance uh, between the 3950 and the uh, 5950X. Uh, um, but in the single core and the single thread, you started them at the same time. Yeah. Ooh. Then I already see the difference. Yeah, this but is the you're not running side by side anymore. Yeah, but the one oh, is oh, you don't see the the squares uh, moving. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. I, I understand. I thought it was stuck. Crash. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> still running. But the, uh, like I said, the single threaded uh, uh, test is quite long, and the Cinebench 15 is quicker than the 20. The 20 will take uh, more than double the time. Uh, but it, it will produce very similar results or uh, very similar result uh, differences. Uh, so the, the yeah the, the Hopefully, the scores will project uh, the difference that we hope to see. And it should be a, a over 20% uh, increase in Cinebench single threaded. Uh. Somebody asking for a Metro Exodus. Yes, we will do. Um, uh, somebody, uh, I bought an MSI X, uh, X570. Uh, not sure what Agisa code. You don't need to worry about that, and yes, you can just upgrade it. If you go to Amazon.com, uh, to Tomahawk, uh, you search uh, Tomahawk X570, uh, there is something like software or BIOS support, you will find the latest BIOS. But again, if your main bus works perfectly, no need to upgrade, uh, because sometimes you only add for, for some support for some new CPU, and flashing, there is always a risk. It's small, but... Good. What is your opinion about flashing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like always flash it? No. It, it, it flash it when it's when you need to. If you have an yeah. issue, flash it. If you uh, um, go to a newer CPU uh, generation, yeah, you need to flash it. Sure, sure. But if you have a system that's running for already a long time, perfectly fine, then wh why, yeah, why put the risk? I would say a BIOS update. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, so correct me. A BIOS update will only give a performance increase in the first three months. Uh, yeah, then mostly the yeah the, uh, the little things will work out and you know, yes, uh, if there there are some you know, unknowns in the in the beginning, then they will figure it out in the first weeks. Yeah, and then yeah, once you are happy with the system, yeah, why risk it? You can see that the B550 with the uh, 5950X is already finished. And we're still waiting for the 39. So I will, I will show the. This, so this one is already finished, yeah. and this one is still running. Yeah. So especially the the single threaded one, uh, just finished now. Uh, uh, I, I think those scores are, are uh, the most interesting ones, and uh, that was also the part where uh, Intel could still beat AMD, and uh, w by uh, single threaded performance. Single threaded yeah. performance, and in gaming. And well, it looks because like of the single threaded performance, the gaming was also better. Yeah, exactly. So the yeah, AMD has closed the gap to, AM, uh, to Intel. And um, with the single threaded performance in Cinebench, they already overtook them. So uh, good job uh, for them. Uh, uh, it's about 60 points higher or okay, 57 points higher. So it's yeah, roughly... Yeah, it's more than 20%. Uh, and again, uh, uh, I think this benchmark's impact by NDI, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's faster without. Uh, no, sorry, the single threaded uh, performance is not slower by NDI. Okay. Why? Because we still have 15 uh, cores doing nothing. Okay, the so, take care of MSI. Yeah, yeah. but the, the, the multi threaded score is lower with NDI because NDI still takes some cycles from the CPU and the GPU away, and that will lower your score. 
But yeah, it, it, it's equal on both because both run NDI, so uh, it's still a very valid uh, comparison. But if you want to have the scores without um, uh, without NDI, just check uh, any uh, any review about uh, the CPU, and usually they have even more CPUs to show you uh, what kind of scores they will get. Uh, we're giving away, uh, yeah, I can do another giveaway. Somebody asking, what about the giveaway results? We already gave away, I think, uh, three or four game keys, and I will do some more. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, and so otherwise, join next week. Yeah. <laughs> so then you then you can maybe win some game codes and a chair. Well, a chair I still need to check. It would be funny, right, to give away a chair. Why not? <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, so what does that mean for gaming? I think people are interested to see that. Yes. Uh, both uh, systems are running a 39, uh, 3090 Gaming X Trio. So uh, the, the, the cards are yeah, identical. Yeah, so let us uh, show this. I can do this in the detailed cam. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so I don't know how long the cable is, but you will see. Oh, oh the little puppet fell down. Okay. Anyway, so this is the Gaming X Trio on the B550. And on this side, we have exactly the same. RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio. Yeah. So uh, to show you um, a, a bigger difference, we're going to use uh, 1080p uh, uh, a game benchmark, so which is a bit, yeah. It's all, not all the specs are the same, right? Memory? Yeah, memory is running 3200 have, uh, megahertz with CAS latency 16. Um, yeah, uh, it's both uh, Corsair. It's, uh, Two times eight gigabytes. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the the timings are identical. The the speed is identical. Uh, the only difference, basically, is the motherboard and the CPU. And the motherboards are very similar. So it's not that the, the motherboard will hold the CPU back in any way. Um, <coughs> let's uh, see if we can do the benchmark. I need to open uh, after. Oh wait, wait. I used. Uh, Poor use. motherboard holding a fat GPU. Yeah, uh, it, it's a, th th this benchmark is not like very realistic because uh, you're probably not going to run uh, 1080p on a 3090. Uh, read, read before you start. Uh, I do a lucky draw. Okay. Uh, and oh, we cannot wait. see anything. Everything, you know, you need to do it in the left side. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm uh, in the background. I'm just uh, running uh, Afterburner, so we have an overlay. Uh, during advanced the stuff? What, sorry? Advanced? Uh, for some, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen uh, people in our building struggle with it uh, sometimes, yes. Uh, Me? Uh, yeah, it was product marketing, yeah. Yeah. yeah probably you, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I, I think it was me and Michiel. Michiel needed to... Uh, yeah, I think you're correct about it. It was one, installing yeah. and he was installing it without uh, the engine. We yeah, and, but also the OSD settings, you were messing with it. Anyway, it yeah. doesn't really matter. Uh, but, uh, one moment, one moment. First going to do a giveaway. Uh, oh, okay. So, uh, again, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla giveaway this week. Uh, next week, the game will, uh, will launch, I think, on the Tuesdays, one, week, one day before the live stream. So, on the... Uh, let me check the date. Uh, tent. Yeah, yeah. So, it will release next week, a Tuesday. And on the 11th, we're going to do some benchmarking and playing around uh, with uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, we also will show you one of our new, new ultra-wide uh, monitors, a gaming monitor. Um, and that's why today we have a code view. And the next code is for why I always have... The, oh, the, uh, Godly. Godly. Easy to pronounce nickname. Thank you. Yes, Godly. So, Godly, congratulations. Uh, in the coming days, you will get an email from us and uh, with the, uh, the game code. Enjoy the game. Uh, you can still participate. Go to amazon.com slash two. And participate. Okay. Uh, our spam bot also, you know this, on Twitch and on YouTube. And maybe you win one of the Assassin's Creed game codes. And if you join next week, I I'm, I'm going to do my best to give away a chair. <laughs> okay. the, the Assassin's Creed one. We will show next week. Yes. Uh, yeah. Three. Okay. Let, let's do the Two. benchmark. And oh. we, I'll it's try not, to do like it simultaneously. It's not like I count down and you click. What? Sorry? Oh, three, two, one, go. 
Hey, you didn't click. You might, uh, oh, I missed it. Damn it. Timing is poor. Sorry, my bad. And uh, what now? Oh, it will run anyway. Oh. So why does it need to be at the same time? Uh, no, it just you can see side by side what the frame rates are doing. So yeah, can you move the uh, MSI Insider box? Oh, this one. The, yeah. yeah, I will. Uh, yeah. Also, one is a little bit bigger than the other one. Oh yeah, we need to have a disclaimer here. Yeah, and the eye is uh, struggling. Uh, it needs more GPU so cycles than it can get. Yeah. So maybe Ruth, you show on your screen. This is buttery smooth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can show you with a detailed cam. There is no choppiness in real life. Also on the other one, I'm not sure if I can get the cable to go there. There's no choppiness there. Yeah, but VNDI capturing. Yeah. So we still need to fix this. Yeah, I, I think you need to get uh, two uh, decent capture cards and, and yeah, invest a little bit. High end. Yeah. Yeah, invest a little bit is not a problem. Yeah. Uh, also, on the B550, uh, um, uh, Afterburner is not aware of this CPU yet because it's so new. Uh, so I use uh, HW Info, so the, the bottom line in orange for the B550 Unify. It will show 4.7-ish uh, gigahertz and uh, about 81 amps sometimes. It fluctuates a lot. Um, and uh, that's because we don't have the power uh, uh, sensors in uh, uh, Afterburner yet. CPU is just l uh, launched a few hours ago, so um, you can expect this uh, to be fixed in, uh, in new releases. This is really choppiness. Yeah, but y you will see also the, the FPS uh, uh, graph from uh, Afterburner, yeah. and you don't see the choppiness there, so that's proof that it's just running smooth. Indeed. Yeah. And of course, it's uh, it, it's not uh, consistent at all. I mean, f uh, frame rates uh, fluctuate a lot. And uh, let me get the scores. So let's look at the average uh, frame rates. And this is what the improvement has done. Can you done. scroll that one also, please? Yeah. That's too much, right? Yeah. So it's like 20%. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, 25%, uh, something like that. or yeah between 20 and 25% uh, increase, um, which is a very nice uh, uh, boost uh, to give your gaming. Uh, of course, this is worst case because it's uh, uh, 1080p uh, resolution in Ultra. That's, that's not the highest setting for a 3090 uh, graphics card. So, yeah. so that, that's, uh, yeah. uh, that's closing the gap to, uh, to Intel. And uh, I took Metro, Metro Exodus because it's uh, one of the games that show the biggest difference between AMD and Intel. Uh, if you don't run NDI in the background, uh, uh, the uh, um, score, the, the 3950 will uh, do about 110 FPS, and uh, the other one, uh, the, the Vermeer, will do about 137 frames per second. So it's basically the same, more or less. I no. mean, the the, the, the the difference is the same. Yes, yes. and uh, the Intel. We also benchmark the Intel uh, 1900K uh, uh, with unlimited power uh, power limits. So basically, running full blast, um, and that one was doing 141 frames per second. So still a little bit higher in this benchmark, but uh, very close. So uh, narrowing the gap uh, in this bench uh, in this game. And uh, if you read the reviews, you will see that AMD is also beating Intel in some other games. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they made a very good step with the CPU. Yeah. Uh, they, they basically they fixed the problems they had. The biggest bottlenecks they fixed. Yeah. And and yeah, let's hope for for the next generations and for I don't know what bottlenecks they now have, but uh. let's. I can try the, the soft rate if you want to do that. Or yeah, sure. Yeah. You, just, just try it. Uh, yeah. you know. Then I only need the B550. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're going to try to run some soft rate. Um, See if we can get the, the, the crystal disk mark uh, numbers. Yeah. Uh, um, the, the problem with soft rate is that, of the, the problem is you configure this in Windows and normally it lags a little bit uh, behind lags and lags, uh, a little bit behind um, hardware rate. And hardware rate on AMD takes time to set up and we didn't yeah, have the time. It's less flexible and 
uh, with this bias, you can switch between chipset and, and CPU, and then it gets all screwed up if you change anything. So uh, I couldn't do any testing. So yeah. it took too much time, and I didn't have that time. And the problem here is always that we want to show you what we're doing. And uh, if we then reset something or take some, some uh, drives out, it's reset, and then we need to uh, go back to square one. Okay. So next Let's time we need to add, uh, when we'll make MSI streaming cams. I don't think so. No plan yet. We have a lot of plans, but that's all for 2021. Are you guys using a crappy NVIDIA for video? Well, it's not crappy. Uh, will MSI 5000 run okay on uh, B550 Tomahawk? Yes, perfectly. Without a problem, just go to the MSI.com website, download the latest BIOS. Nah, fingers crossed. Let's hope it does what Okay, so we this hope. is uh, three... Western Digital SN850 Gen 4 SSDs of 1 terabyte. Yeah. Uh, PCI Express Gen 4 in RAID 0. Yes, so before we had uh, three SN850s as single drives, and now yeah. it's combined as a striped volume, uh, mm -hmm. so meaning uh, soft uh, RAID 0. So let's see what it does. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what it can achieve. I haven't tested this properly yet, so it's a surprise for me as well. So if it's good or bad, oh, it's nice. Whoa. Very good. <laughs> it's very good, yeah. yeah. Before I tried it, and then one drive was running at Gen 3, holding the, r the rest back. And yeah, this is uh, very good, very good. Uh, let me check what I have here, or had, have, have. But now I cannot copy the drives, uh, the, the, the game or, or the video folder anymore because I had to delete those data. And I don't have a drive that can feed uh, uh, any data as fast as this one can write or read. This is even, ah, I know the difference, Ruud. So um, uh, I'm going to switch. Uh, so uh, this one uh, Yeah, was th these are under 500 gig uh, drives. Yeah, so 500 gig drives. Yeah. And also, uh, this is uh, using a 3900XT. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that will matter much. No, but... Probably our write uh, speeds will also be higher. Uh, this one, yeah. So, uh, 12, and this one was 14. No. Oh, no, okay. Then, no. Yeah. Well, but anyway, that, that's always that, when, with the benchmark. That could um, be the hardware rate and the software rate thing. It yeah. can also be, indeed, yeah. the software rate. And uh, if we run it after this, it probably will give different scores. So to get a good yeah. average, you will need to run this like five times. Yeah, usually uh, the, the default setting is also run it five times. Oh, okay. So, uh, and then it will just show you the <laughs> best know. score. Just guessing here. Yeah. No, no, but if you go to the slide, does it say uh, five runs? Because yes. it will show you the it, it does. It uh, will show you the capture, best uh, run. It will not one. show you the average. It will show five. Yeah. So if we run it five times, then maybe the discourse will be equal or better. Yeah. yeah. But this is a very impressive result. This is uh, indeed. Yeah. yeah. And this is on B550. Don't forget yeah. that. This is on B550. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'll make a screenshot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can use it later. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah. On the website. Yeah, looks good. So that that's about it. I had for demo. So, really, really expensive uh, one terabyte storage for speed. Well, you know, everything what's fast and what's new is is uh, priced accordingly. Uh, I don't want to say it's expensive, uh, but price will come down. I mean, uh, there will always be faster. Uh, I mean, I already yeah. talked about Gen Five launching probably next year somewhere, maybe the year after. Uh, not sure about that. Uh, and then we double the speed. I would say. On PCI Express Gen 5? Yeah. Okay. That's double the speed. I was re reading the, the questions. So it means that B550 unifies the best MOBO mo mainboard. Yeah, MOBO, that's a, that's a good one. Now, no, for sure not. The best MOBO is what you decided to be, meaning uh, it's your budget. What kind of CPU 
Yeah. Are you going to run on it? What are you going to do with it? Uh, very important indeed. What is your usage? Are you going yeah. to play games? Do you want to uh, do world records? Are you going to do content creation? Are you just going to browse the internet or watch YouTube? Uh, all, uh, all different purposes. So yeah. I don't want to say this is a, uh, for the price. I think B550 Unify is a very attractive motherboard with a lot of features, with a lot of specs you don't see in the same segment, uh, like the uh, four um, M.2 slots or three uh, Gen 4 slots. But if you are not into storage and you are happy with your uh, SATA drive, then this is not the best main board for you. And I mean, don't trust us. I mean, we just show you what we have, what yeah. it can do. Uh, or internal testing or ID behind it, you go to your uh, Tom's Hardware, Gamers Nexus, and then all those media guys to, and I probably forget a lot of them <laughs> tonight. Hey, you didn't mention me. Anyway, uh, go to them and, and check out the reviews and Unify, I believe in the coming weeks, you will see some reviews of that. Not sure exactly when, because they're yeah. very busy with testing all the hardware. So, yeah. Um, let me see. Do I need to flash the BIOS on B550 Gaming, uh, which I bought two weeks ago? Uh, yes. Uh, I believe you can boot the CPU. Yeah. But there is. Uh, we just released yesterday a new BIOS update. Yeah. And to be honest, it's very difficult to say if your B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi that you bought two weeks ago already has the latest BIOS. Or, or if there's a new Agisa BIOS update. Um, so yeah, best to flash it. But don't worry, because we have a BIOS flash button. So even without having the right CPU, you can just flash your BIOS. So yeah, your question, uh, Stavros, is do I need to flash the B550 Gaming Edge? I bought two weeks ago for the 5600X I got today. Well, I, I, you're, and you're watching this. I hope on your mobile phone or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, best to update the BIOS. Go to Amazon.com, uh, find your main board, B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, and you find a BIOS update. Or use a um, uh, live update. And if you don't yeah. have an old CPU, you already bought the main board waiting for the CPU to launch, uh, then use BIOS flashback, uh, of BIOS flash button, I should say. Uh, and you can find that on the MSI website as well. Um, Checking email quickly on PCI Express Gen 4. What device recorded those uh, 1800 uh, of 18,000, as you say, megabytes per second? This is three times um, PCI Express in RAID 0. So it's RAID 0 with three. Uh, Western Digital SN850. Gen one terabyte. By four. Actually, it's, I, I can show you this PPT so here on, yeah. the, on the bottom. And uh, the, the uh, benchmark is called Crystal Disk Mark. You can just download it, it's freeware. You can test your own system as well. But you uh, probably get uh, like uh, three at home, maybe lower. Yeah, if you have like a Gen 4, then uh, depends on, on, on what generation you have. Most 5,000. Yeah, mo most will uh, top out at 5,000. If you have a Gen 3, a fast one will uh, go up to 3,600. And uh, a, yeah, sometimes you have a, a Gen 3 by 2, uh, it will top out around 18, 1900, something like that. And write speeds will differ because some are QLC and some are with cache, some are without cache. And yeah, the, the better the drive, the, the faster the, the write speeds will be as well. Yeah. Uh, oh. hmm. Of course, this is a very short test because it only uses one gigabyte, uh, gigabyte of data. So uh, this is just a, a quick show of what kind of performance oh, you have you the box get. you have yeah. the box over there right Ruud? uh the box yeah sorry it, it fell down it's no uh, but maybe you can show that's the one we're cam? using yeah this is um yeah so the packing doesn't lie it says 7000 megabytes per second and that's also yeah. what we got yeah we and got we're using three more. now yeah. in soft rate so maybe yeah. hardware rate can even be better yeah especially for the read speeds uh right right speeds yeah I, I think it can yeah it can do better yeah Indeed. Um, Ruud, do you still have anything to add? No, I think I demoed the parts I wanted. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, or yeah, if I there's still any questions, uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer. Always them. a lot of questions. Yeah, uh, somebody asked yeah. about GTX uh, 4090. <laughs> it's 
probably going to be RTX, right? <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> or maybe something else. Uh, yeah. Some 4K benchmarks set of 1080p. Yeah, but then, uh, then you don't focus on the on the CPU anymore. Then all the bottleneck goes to the GPU, and then these are identical cards. It will produce almost identical results. Yeah. So Probably. 1080p, you have the uh, CPU, which is the bottleneck. Uh, A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's also why we're using that. Yeah. Uh, B550, oh sorry, uh, uh, the twins, uh, B450, uh, the AMD will release the code on in January 2021 for both B450 and uh, X5, X470, sorry. Uh, and yeah, I already explained earlier, it will probably take us a month to get this out. So we first release a beta BIOS version and then yeah, it will take some time uh, before we go to final. Uh, but yeah, for this we depend on AMD. Is it possible to return to an older BIOS if a new one has problems? Yeah, for sure, no problem. You can uh, flash, yeah, find the old BIOS, bi download it, and you can uh, flash it back. Uh, there is no protection mechanism. Like you have on mobile phones, especially Apple, uh, you cannot flash back to an older version because those are not signed anymore. Sometimes the, 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 with the <laughs> AMD, you cannot go back to uh, a previous Agisa, so not, yep. not everything go can go back. And also with Intel, with the uh, management engine, right? Uh, yeah, the management engine is also... Uh, no, it's not locked, I think. I'm not sure. But no, it's difficult it if Intel you're yet. going to start mix and flashback that, but it doesn't happen a lot. No, no, just use mFlash and then the ME will <laughs> be also... Uh, MSI is really expanding the product range. Haven't uh, seen that cooler before. Ruud, maybe? Oh, you have the Which box one? in the back. In the back, you have the box, right? On the yeah, ground. it's on the front, yeah. No, on the back. No? On what the ground, cooling? you have the, the triple cooling, yeah, the, over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I also have, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. We, we put the 240 on the, on the new one, on the Vermeer, uh, not to give it any advantage over the, the Matisse. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's something so nice. So it doesn't benefit the cooling because the better cooler is on the, on the Matisse. Yeah. So but probably Matisse can perform better if we use the 360 there, 360R. Yeah, the Vermeer, you mean, yeah. Uh, so, um, if you are interested in this uh, cooler, uh, water cooling, uh, we already had a live stream about that and then uh, we also took it apart. Not me, I'm afraid of water, <laughs> but Peter, he took it apart, he showed you how it's working, the internals, and I think he also showed you if you can drink the water. Now he's sick, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, well, it was a cool live stream. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, cool. what I'm going to do, I'm going to do another giveaway. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit. Okay, uh, next winner is Retza. So Retza, uh, congratulations! Um, thanks for participating. In the coming days, we will send you a, a, a game code uh, for uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, so, next week, next week we're on Wednesdays, because today is Thursday, and typically we do a live stream on Wednesday, but, you know, with Sentry, if AMD launches today, we're always flexible, um, and we will adjust. So, next week, Wednesday, uh, the 11th of November, uh, we're going to uh, show you our new ultra-wide MAG 342 CQR, which is a 44P uh, monitor with RGB and all the stuff, and we're going to play this new Assassin's Creed Valhalla game. Uh, I'm probably going to do that with Ja, uh, not 100% final. And yeah, we also have uh, some Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, game codes to give away. And you see that chair over there uh, on, the, on the poster behind Ruud. Maybe we also will give away one, but yeah, I need to, I need to back some people. Can we give away a chair? Why do you want that? Anyway, it's for you guys. Thank you all for joining. Uh, thank you all for your questions. It was, again, really interesting. And hope to see you uh, next week. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.